So there is Ange Postacoglu, who won three Manager of the Month awards in a row at the start of the season. That had never been done by a new manager in the Premier League since then. If you look at the table from the 1st of November to now, Tottenham have gone from first place to 11th place in that period. If you don't include the points deductions for Nottingham Forest and for Everton, it's not quite gone completely wrong. They can still get Champions League, and if they win their games, they will guarantee Europa League. Postacoglu is now on the edge of his technical area, waiting for the players to come out. Seven Nation Army is blaring all around this stadium. 60,000 fans are on their feet, waiting for the players to make their way out. What do you expect to see from today, Chris Owellamu? Goals. I think that's, that's, that's guaranteed, isn't it? Goals from both sides. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I'm going to put my raise my head above the parapet and I'm going to say 3-2. Thought, no. thought about it. He thought about it. He nearly went down the colours of his old club. Well, goals is what we would love to deliver for you. And at this point, you might hear the swelling of crowd noise welcoming the players onto the pitch. Here come Tottenham, here come Burnley. For Burnley, it's must win. For Tottenham, they really want to win. Here's your match commentators, Chris Oelamo and Ian Danta. Thank you, Chris, and a very good afternoon to you wherever and however you're listening to Talk Sport 2. Picture perfect weather in North London and perfection is effectively what is required from both of these teams to conclude their season if they are to get the results that they want. Tottenham still have lingering hopes of a top four finish, but nine points from the remaining nine is the requirement, with Villa only needing two points, surely, to make sure that they have a Champions League berth. For Burnley, they simply have to win here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and then hope that Chelsea do them a favour against Nottingham Forest at tea time to take their survival fight to the final day potentially, depending on what Luton can do, and Burnley play Forest at Turf Moor a week tomorrow. What a game that could potentially be. Talk about season defining. Well, Tottenham's season started so brilliantly. As Chris mentioned, they were unbeaten in their first 10 games with eight wins. A few wins in a row would help them. And they have to go into these final three games without Richarlison, their Brazilian striker, who's been ruled out not only today with a calf injury, but also his national coach for Brazil has revealed that he's not been picked for the upcoming Copa America. He'd only come on as a sub at Anfield when Spurs lost 4-2. So the two changes made by Anas Postacoglu see Oliver Skip, who played at left back for a time up on Merseyside, and James Madison brought in. Rodrigo Bentancourt and Emerson Royale dropped to the bench. Guglielmo Vicario is the Spurs keeper. A back four of Pedro Porro, Christian Romero, Mickey van der Ven and Oliver Skip. Pape Sar, Yves Bissouma and James Madison, the midfield three. Dejan Kulisevsky and Brennan Johnson either side of Son Hyung Min in attack. As for Burnley, they lost heavily at home to Newcastle last time out. 4-1 it was to the Magpies. One change for the Clarets. Charlie Taylor recalled in place of Josh Brownhill. And it looks like a rejig back to more of a 4-4-2 for Burnley this afternoon. We'll see what happens when they kick off. Ari Muric is the goalkeeper. Lorenz Asignon. Dara O'Shea, Maxime Estev and Charlie Taylor in a back four. Josh Cullen and Sander Berger in midfield. And then Vitinho, Jakob Brunlarsson, Wilson Odebear behind Lyle Foster in attack. Players all massing around the centre circle as bidded to do so by referee Jared Gillett from Australia. This is all for former Spurs player Terry Medwin, who sadly passed away this week. And a minute's applause is now beginning in his honour here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Midwin, part of the Tottenham team that did the double back in the 1960-61 season 
and our sincere condolences to his family and friends. Well, that double era Spurs team, something they'd love to recreate here, this purpose-built, beautiful, brand new stadium. It's Chris Iwanamo's first visit here and he's been like a kid in a sweet shop this afternoon so far. Yeah, it's a fantastic arena, isn't it? You know, even even the hospitality for us was outstanding as soon as you walk in, but well, listen to this. It's absolutely outstanding. The noise, fans right on top. If you can't play in this, you can't play anywhere. Eh? Unbelievable. Spurs in all white will kick us off there, heading for the north stand in this first half, away to our left. Myself and Chris and the team are sat two-thirds of the way up in this giant west stand and the even bigger south stand to our right is the end that Burnley in their chain strip will be attacking it's uh, black shirts shorts and socks with a bit of light blue around the shoulders on the shirts and straight away there's a high press from Burnley and Vicario plays the ball into the feet of Eve Basuma Son tries to turn the ball round the corner up to halfway but Charlie Taylor will beat Brennan Johnson to the ball and clip it downfield and we will see just how compressed the play is when either team is in possession Romford have won the FA Vars final they're 3-0 up at Great Wakering Rovers Gateshead against Solihull Moors in the FA Trophy comes later this afternoon well you're just looking at the defensive line of Burnley very very high they're pressing very well Tottenham very comfortable in the ball taking risks but like you say got away uh, with it at the minute you know, look at this, they're, they're just composed. It's, it's just, it's, it's nice to look at. And then they, when they get forward in those attacking areas, it's, uh, they, they cause problems. But uh, Burnley doing everything right at the minute, compact, high defensive line. It's pushing everyone on, making it difficult for Tottenham, but comfortable in possession, Spurs. And that forced Son Young min into fouling Vitinho, which gives Burnley a free kick. A minute gone, nil-nil on TalkSport 2. I'll keep you in touch with the other Premier League three o'clock games this afternoon. And there's a few games in the Scottish playoffs in League One and League Two. And of course, the playoffs continue tonight live on Talksport 2. MK Dons against Crawley, with Crawley 3 0 up from the first leg. So a free kick to Burnley here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which is going to be whipped in by Josh Cullen. Spurs holding a very high line and very compact as well. The width of the D, basically, 25 yards out. It's flicked on to the right-hand corner of the box, helped into the area by Dara O'Shea, but Spurs clear, but Vitinho gives the ball all the way back to his keeper. Didn't really need to, but Muric can swing play back out to this right-hand side, and O'Shea, who tries to feed it down the line to get Cullen in behind, and Larson, but it's through to the keeper, nil-nil. Yeah, well, you called it there, Ian. You know, Vitinho had uh, possession of the ball from the Cullen little knockdown there. He has to go out to Jacob Brun Larson. And Muric off his line as Tottenham send the ball down the inside right looking for Brennan Johnson and Muric has always got a good starting position in those instances yeah I think it's the responsibility of a goalkeeper today you know that, that that sweeper role coming out he's comfortable with his feet at that moment there he had to come out and just put the head on it didn't he but yeah he's always going to be there away comes uh, Sander Berger for Burnley into the centre circle keeps his feet after he was challenged by Christian Romero Asignol works it down the near side and plays a 1-2 and gets away having been given the ball back by Jakob Brun Larsson but Van der Ven gets himself between player and ball and wins it back at least temporarily for Spurs Skip playing at left back today then played there at Anfield when things were not going Spurs way and they're playing themselves out of very tight areas on this left hand side and they find Son Jung Min who can scamper up past the halfway line Kulisevsky to his left Pape Sarr calling for it and Madison now picks it up through the middle into the area Madison's shots deflected over the crossbar by Charlie Taylor and it's a corner to Spurs at the North Stand end 0-0 well it's excellent quality from Tottenham there as soon as uh, Son got the ball in the midfield there he turns he drives the way to pass into the path of Madison as well. They had a couple of pulls that could have taken it on. We've done everything right, Madison. Got the shot away on target, but defensively the block was uh, that came in there. It's an excellent challenge. Uh, does it Taylor yeah. that threw himself at it? Excellent defensive challenge, but it just shows you the speed, the quality from back to front from Tottenham Hotspur there. Madison's going to take the corner at the northeast corner in front of the travelling Burnley fans. It's a poor corner though for Spurs, cleared at the near post by Jakob Brun Larson. 
back on halfway with Skip. Now Bissouma for Tottenham, just ahead of the centre circle. Plays the ball back as a square to his right for Porro. Just pops it into the feet of Pape Sar. And now it's worked out to Kulisewski, hugging this left-hand touchline for Tottenham Hotspur. Son makes a run down the left-hand side, but he's being watched all the way by Dara O'Shea. And O'Shea wins it back. Odebear gives it to Jakob Larsson, coming over the halfway line. Moving infield, to his left is Vitinho, to his right is Oliver. Picks out Wilson Oliver, approaching the right-hand corner of the box, into the area, looking to get away from Skip. Good ball to the far post, Vitinho's header, pushed off the crossbar by the keeper and headed behind for a corner. So close to Burnley, taking a shot lead on five minutes. Corner to the Clarets, 0-0. This excellent quality has to be in the back of the net. Oh, the bird and everything right there, dinked up to the back. Vitino, he, he tries to go back across goal. I think he's got to go uh, near post there with power. You know, he had to generate it himself. Vicario, great save. Just a reaction save, but straight at him there. Has to be in the back of it, has to do better. Look at the space that he's got at that near post. It's a corner kick to be taken by Oliver, right-footed out swinger, headed clear at the near post by Skip. Kulisevsky trying to launch a counter-attack. Brennan Johnson was going like an express train on the far side of the field. But Kulisevsky's lost out. Burnley have it again. Jakob Brun Larsson finds Oliver, right wing, level with the edge of the area. Early cross over the head of Foster. He was being marshalled well, it seemed, by Christian Romero. And Pedro Porro will bring the ball clear for Spurs. So we're under a bit of pressure here on five minutes, nil-nil. Well, we had, a, we had a bit of concern about uh, Skip playing in that left-back role. Crosses are coming in, he has to do more to stop those crosses he's from, uh, from uh, the, the route there. Has to do more. Spurs have given the ball away again. The ball's back with Dara O'Shea. And now his goalkeeper in uh, shocking pink this afternoon, Ari Muric, the Burnley keeper. Asignon, the right-back. He's been playing well, he's on loan from Wren. Got an option to buy him at the end of the season scored and assisted against Sheffield United when Burnley won a rare game in February ball given away by the Clarets here comes Brennan Johnson down the right hand side in bright sunshine for Nottingham Forest lays it back to Porro thought about a first time cross Pedro Porro who scored the winner here in the FA Cup third round against Burnley back in January Saar into Pedro Porro once again Saar on the far right hand touchline elects to go back to Van de Ven inside the centre circle, skipped just to his left, immediately closed down by Jakob Brun Larsson. Jared Gillett weighs play on, as Madison felt he was fouled because Bissouma finds Kulisewski. Left-hand corner of the box, floats the cross in to the far post. Johnson almost caught Muric out, who'd come off his line, thinking he could catch that original cross, was in no man's land, but got back to his near post to turn. Johnson shot behind for a Spurs corner, nil-nil. Uh, what? It, it, Muric does come out, then realises very quickly that he can. Brennan Johnson does everything right. You know, it's just about the, the, the contact. It's going in, it's an excellent save, recovery save from Muric with the left hand at the near post there. So, you know, it's, uh, like I've got to say, the quality of Brennan Johnson there just to be composed, make sure the connection on target. Fantastic save from Muric. Madison will have the corner again in that northeast corner by the Burnley fans. Whipped into the near post and again it's hit the first defender. This time Jakob Brun Larsson. Luton lead at West Ham United. Albert Laconga has put Luton ahead. So they'll move on to 29 points, same as Forest. If things stay as they are at the London Stadium. Here's Kulisewski for Tottenham Hotspur at 0-0 here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We've played eight minutes. Bissouma rolls the ball down the left-hand side of the box for Pape Sar, who drifts away from the penalty area towards the corner flag on this near side. Now Bissouma tries to get Son in behind O'Shea, but that's good defending from the former West Brom Mandara O'Shea. And then ball headed downfield for Jakob and Larsen to give chase, but Van der Ven, good strength from the Spurs centre-half on the halfway line and Spurs have it again, nil-nil. Yeah, he's came and snuffed out the, the danger a couple of times, you know, I think he's, he's, he's got to kind of help uh, Oliver skip out every opportunity, but he just reads that, that, that the game very, very well and come across a fantastic turn there in the box. Well, Porro nearly got inside Vitinho, but in credit to Vitinho, stuck to his task very well to regain possession and then he was pushed outside the box in Burnley's left-back position. So Burnley get themselves a free kick. They've only lost two of their last nine matches, Burnley. 
So there has been an improvement in recent times. It could be too little too late. They're facing a fourth Premier League relegation if they lose or fail to win today. Eight teams before them have managed at least four relegations in the Premier League era. Yeah, you say that, Ian, as well. I think the most disappointing thing about those losses as well, when they conceded those goals against Newcastle and Everton, i never seen a reaction. You know, I was covering both games, i never seen that reaction to go and try and get back into the game, get something out of the game. So first goal is so, so important today. And they've had as good a chance as any in these first nine minutes, Burnley, but Bettinho's header well kept out by Vicario's save. Bissouma for Tottenham, up to Pape Sarr, just shy of the halfway line. Gives it back in field to Bissouma, plays a good one-two. Madison was caught, long ball downfield. Madison stayed down in the centre circle. Jared Gillett looks across to his near side. He might be punishing a Burnley player, but Madison is thankfully getting to his feet. Ball's back in field with Sander Berger for Burnley. Jakob Larson trying to stay on side as the ball's floated across to him, brings it down, but Skip comes out to engage. So it's rolled back 20 yards or so for Asignor. Then Larson again tries to get behind Skip from Cullen's ball into the area. Skip got a touch on it. They go out for a corner. Uh, went out for a goal kick, says Jared Gillett. Nil nil. Now, well, look at this. I think, uh, well, if it went for a goal kick, then it's a penalty to kick. I think all of us get made a very timely challenge. It was a risk, but I thought he got the ball and steered it back to the goalkeeper, who should not have picked it up. But uh, it's another one. The referee was positioned well. Josh Cullen got a yellow card for that challenge on James Madison in that build-up. You're listening to Tottenham nil, Burnley nil on TalkSport 2 with now. Don't forget that with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest versus Chelsea live today, contract-free with a now membership. Just search now sports. We've played 11 minutes at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Asignor stole the ball off Kulisevsky who brought him down and Asignor went down very theatrically arching his back as he fell free kick Burnley nil nil yeah waiting to see this one back in the monitor Asignor as he's running uh, Kulisevsky comes down on, on his ankle traps his ankle in the, in the floor you know it's a foul but oh it's a so oh it's a so yeah he's caught Asignor just with his thigh as he fell Kulisevsky Asignor is still down on his knees but just getting to his feet now and will hobble away and hopefully be able to run that injury off Livingston Nilsson Johnston won in the Scottish Premiership relegation group earlier today the Glasgow derby went the way of Celtic 2-1 victors against Rangers one hand on the trophy and in the also in that relegation group in the Scottish Premiership Ross County nil Motherwell won so a free kick to Burnley with 12 minutes gone. Just past the midway point of the Spurs half. To the right of centre. Spurs holding their line at the edge of the 18-yard box. Jakob Brun Larsen is the Burnley player standing over this free kick. So it'll be a right-footed outswinger trying to keep it away from Vicario, who stands just in front of his goal line. Whipped in by Larsen, headed up in the air at the near post by Bissouma. Larsen tries to win the 50-50 header with Son. And Kulosevsky... Brings the ball clear for Tottenham Hotspur. Tries to thread it into the inside left channel for Son, who made a terrific run forward. But Burnley dealt with it. And they have it back with Larson. Nil-nil. Cullen, who's just been booked, finds Lyle Foster on this near touch line. Slides it further down this right-hand side for Wilson Odebear. Foster's gone again in field. Meanwhile, Odebear's won a throw for the Clarets. Nil-nil. Yeah, never had much on there. You know, you had... Uh... Lyle Foster trying to run through centrally, kind of stretching the pitch there. Odebers, I think he's going for the throw and just trying to get it off of uh, Van de Ven there. But uh, no, it was better quality from Burnley. You know, options, getting the head up, trying to play forward, moving the ball quickly as well. But the, the speed of the break uh, Tottenham is, is ridiculous. You know, Sun coming through centrally there. Kulzeski, that ball wasn't too far away. You know, the weight of pass was excellent, but it was definitely defended very, very well from Asignol. Charlie Taylor back in the Burnley side today has to flick the ball back to Maxime Estev and further back to Muric he elects to thump it downfield first time headed up in the end the centre of the circle by Bissouma and he found Madison but then Bissouma's crossfield pass looking for Kulisevsky was picked off by Asignon has gone down again holding his ankle after another collision with the Swede and now Jakob and Larson wins a throw and Asignon looks at Jared Gillett the referee and wants retribution for Dejan Kulisevsky He's not going to get it, nil-nil. 
Yeah, I don't think there was too much in that. You know, there's contact, but it's a contact sport, isn't it? Trying to put a little bit of pressure on the on the referee. Even the first one, I don't think it's a free kick. It's not a yellow card. It was unintentional. It was just the way that it caused Eski was uh, it, it, it fall. It, it fell. Craig Bellamy just having a little quiet word in Vincent Company's ear down beneath us. Regulation black jacket on, black strides and white G, uh, white uh, trainers for Vincent Company and his black cap. Postacoglu just to his right, arms folded as Johnson comes forward for Spurs, tries to whip across in from the right-hand side. We've got far too much on that. And it goes behind for a Burnley goal kick with nearly a quarter of an hour played. Live football coming later. MK Dons against Crawley live tonight here on TalkSport 2 at 7.45. We've got some rugby as well before the Exeter Chiefs against Harlequins in the Premiership with both those teams trying to get a top four berth. That's with Andrew McKenna and the team straight after this commentary. And then we'll be off to Stadium MK with Alex Crook and Adrian Clark to see whether MK can mount an extraordinary comeback. And in fairness, Crew showed last night in the League 2 players you can come back when you look like you're dead and buried. One on penalties last night against Doncaster. Thrilling commentary from Jim Proudfoot and Courtney Sweetman Kirk on Talk Sport 2 here. And then tomorrow, playoffs in the Championship. Back to back live games on Talk Sport from high noon. I'll be at Carra Road along with Scott Minto for Norwich against Leeds. And then straight after that, we're off to the Hawthorns for West Bromwich Army against Southampton. Here's Son Jong Win for Spurs at 0 0. Finds Brennan Johnson, but as soon as he got possession, just at the edge of the D, in steps Sander Berger just to flick the ball off his toe and get it back to his keeper. 0 0. And here's Jakob Brun Larsen just trying to turn away from Kulisevsky and get away. Poor pass in field, but it won't run for Son Jong Min. Dara O'Shea gives it back to Murich and he clips it very neatly out to Charlie Taylor. Taylor into the feet of Lyle Foster just over the halfway line, out to the left wing. Vitinho playing on the left-hand side today. Spots Larson in space on this near side, the Burnley right. Can't get in behind Kulisevsky. Back doing his defensive duties well, Dejan Kulisevsky. Helping out Oliver Skip in this unusual role. Now Skip is charging forward down the left-hand side and he's got ahead of Asignon, at least for a moment. Now Asignon gets goal side but commits a foul on the halfway line. Right down beneath us. In between the two technical areas, it's his first free kick, nil-nil. Well, I'm sure you've uh, you've noticed the, the the trend here. You know, I think Oliver Skip, he's, he is, he's naturally kind of going inside, and that out ball is, is for Jacob Brun Larson or Asignon or Udebe, whoever's on this right hand side is always on, always on. So you see whoever's getting the ball in central the pitch or on the left hand side, they're looking for that big switch all the time. So the only goal in the three o'clock games in the Premier League has come at Molyneux so far because Luton lead at West Ham. Now, Brighton lead at Newcastle United. Brighton, no away win in seven, but Joel Veltman, the Dutchman, has put them ahead. And that's good news for Spurs, because they're trying to keep Newcastle United at bay, looking a little nervously over their shoulders. Nil-nil here, with 17 minutes gone. Pape Sarr gets in behind us there for a moment, gets into the area for Tottenham, rolls it back to Son Jung min at the edge of the box. Back again comes Sander Berger. That's two or three times he's done that for Burnley already. Taking the toe, taking the ball off the toe of Spurs players when they look in dangerous positions. Nil-nil. Well, that's the responsibility of uh, both Josh Collin and, and Sander Berger there. You know, I think just sit in front of that back four and make sure those balls can't come in centrally to uh, the likes of Son. Back at Van der Ven, clears the ball downfield, but it just skips ahead of Dejan Kulisevsky. Muric under pressure from Son. Plays the ball out to Charlie Taylor, but he couldn't keep it in play. Tried to head it back into play, but instead it's given Spurs a throw, and the Spurs fans want their team to get on with it quickly, use the multi-ball system and get the ball back into play. Ball turned around the corner by Madison, gets it back at the edge of the area, goes down, wants a free kick, and the referee very quick to spread his arms wide and say, nothing doing, play on. Taylor for Burnley, clears the ball up to the halfway line. Does it stay in play on that far side? It does. And Christian Romero lets the ball run across his body and guides it back to his keeper. Vicario, nil-nil the score. 18 and a half minutes gone on game day exclusive on TalkSport 2. Earlier today, Manchester City swept Fulham aside in the TalkSport lunchtime commentary. 4-0 in the end. And so Arsenal, who play Manchester United tomorrow, know they've got to keep winning. Manchester City are here on Tuesday night in that game in hand that they have. 
foul on Asignor again Kulisevsky the aggressor this yeah, time yeah he's giving him a hard time this afternoon already you know that's three four challenges very aggressive let's let let's, Asignor know that he's he's very much in a game but uh, already he's he's chipping away at the referee he's just got to watch what he says Asignor that's the voice of Chris Iceman Iwelamo alongside me Ian Danter on commentary he's at least talking to us today I thought his next interview would be with Gareth A. Davis and Adam Catterall on fight, fight night <laughs> after he's winning a charity boxing match last night Chris if you weren't aware and let's would you take him on? <laughs> not likely back it goes to Murich I've kept some space between me and Chris in our commentary position today in case any swinging right hands come my way Burnley coming forward with Jakob Brun Larsen but across comes Van der Ven who's no slouch slides in puts it out of play with a no-nonsense clearance well, good experience from the player as well you know Van de Ven he knows all of the skips playing out of possession he knows he's going to he's going to get found out every now and again and he's been there every single time just to clear up you know Burnley are I've got to say capitalising down that they're really kind of getting a little bit of joy uh, down this right hand side early throw for Burnley Foster tries to tuck it into the edge of the area for Vitinho, but it's one back by Romero and then he plays a really reckless ball out to the halfway line and Burnley have it back again Bettino can have a run at Pedro Porra here slips it into the box looking for the run of Foster just over hit Foster acknowledges the intent but it was straight through to Vicario 0-0 well, I don't think there's anything wrong with that ball from Fadinho there I think Foster is, 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 is not going at full pull if he, if he does he's, he's possibly getting on the end of that there it's not a bad ball just splitting pass between the, the uh, Porro and Romero you know, but it's an excellent run from, from Foster but just be committed to it Lyle Foster, one of three Burnley players at the top of their Premier League goal scoring charts with five. And Dooney and Larson are the other two players who've notched five Premier League goals. And that, of course, will be a huge problem to anybody trying to say in the Premier League that your top scorer's only got a handful. Pape Sarr for Spurs, plays it out to the right hand side. Porro giving chase. Good ball into the area, played it blind. Sara continued his running the inside right channel but before he could get near it Ari Murich the Burnley keeper had gobbled the ball up and he has it in his hands at the edge of his area 21 minutes gone nil nil no oh, fantastic link up play isn't it from uh, Pedro Porro and Saar a little bit too much on it but Muric has to be alive to that and just comes out and collects it comfortably we both have terrible play. terrible clearance and it's found Pape Saar Son Young min inside the D goes for a shot left footy but didn't get behind it and Murich made a very comfortable save didn't have to move to pick it up as it rolled towards him 0-0 the yeah, score but again just uh, an unforced error you know trying to overplay I think when you've got the, the outlet of, of Foster or, or Brun, uh, Brun Larson, that's where it's got to go and then play in the right areas then Spurs yet to get going here and we're almost at the midway point of the first half no concerted pressure really from the home side and the best chance of the game, if you're just tuning in to talk sport to, has undoubtedly gone the way of Burnley. A Vitinho header from a right wing cross that was well tipped over the crossbar by Vicario for a corner which came to nothing. Ball's back on halfway with Mickey van der Ven for the hosts. Now Romero, his centre half partner, slides it out to the right hand side for Brennan Johnson. Pedro Porro takes over knowing that Johnson had continued his run down the right hand side tried to nod it past Charlie Taylor they both went to ground and the referee says nah nothing in that 50-50 goal kick Burnley free kick I don't, I don't understand He's, Brendan Johnson's got there first took the ball away that should be enough if there's any contact after that it's a free kick he stopped him from advancing into the box there well he's letting a lot go Jared Gillett who was wearing a uh, body cam when he was refereeing at Selhurst Park on Monday night showing a referee's perspective on what it's like to be out there the ball out on the left hand side with Charlie Taylor tight to the touchline looks for Vitinho he claimed he was fouled by Romero nothing doing again another challenge allowed to go unpunished and Son Jong Min drives it goalwards but actually well wide it was a good 10 yards wide in the end the Korean striker just snatched at the effort on the right hand edge of the penalty area midway point of the first half you're listening to Spurs nil, Burnley nil on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes so if you've got a plan they've got 
Aban. Here's Chris Willemar. Well, you're looking at Sun there as soon as he received that ball. Yes, he got turned, but he's got to, he's got to deal with Sanderberg coming from one side, Josh Cullen coming from another, and then all this Estev coming out and, and blocking that angle. He's tried to go through it with the right foot, the outside of the right foot, but just the connection wasn't right. Look, he's a danger man. He's going to have those players protecting the, the defensive line. Sanderberger breaks the lines, rolls it through to Brun Larson inside the area. Jakob Brun Larson gives Burnley the lead. The Burnley fans on the far side can't quite believe it, but it's been coming because Burnley have been asking questions. Jakob Brun Larson played in behind by Sanderberger's pinpoint pass. And he waited for Vicario to commit himself, slid it past him, and yet again, Spurs concede first at home. Tottenham Hotspur nil, Burnley won. Well, it was a red flag, wasn't it, when you're looking at Oliver Skip in that position. You know, Jacob Brulansen gets in behind him. It's an excellent ball uh, from Sanderberg, splitting the both uh, the central, uh, central defenders. It's too easy for the big man there. He's coming inside. You know, look at Oliver Skip, he's 10 yards behind Brun Larson. Makes a, ch a challenge at the end, but it's an excellent finish. Great first touch, opens up the goal. Vicario tries to stay big, and like you say, when he goes, it's an excellent finish from Jacob Brun Larson. Well, Spurs want to restart, but all the Burnley players have come across to this near touchline to take on some water and get some impromptu coaching from Vincent Company. But Jakob Brun Larson, the Dane on loan from Hoffenheim, becomes Burnley's top scorer with his sixth of the season Crystal Palace go in front at Wolves through Elise and Spurs have got it all to do in front of their own supporters once again Dominic Solanke's just given Bournemouth the lead against Brentford at the Vitality well deja vu for Spurs fans deja vu that's all you can say because this is not the first time that Tottenham have fallen behind at home having looked lacklustre in the opening stages no well they haven't got going you know I think you, you've seen little flashes maybe on two or three occasions but still I've got to say Munich has been, been, been comfortable in this game not asked too many questions if any you know I think uh, Burnley are looking more threatened in this right hand side for me Oliver Skip left back does not work you know yeah okay he's, he's, he's a technically gifted footballer but I, out of position he's getting dragged look where he is now he's sitting in the holding midfield position nowhere near uh, where he should be as a, as a left back well we do see some orthodox full back positioning Jack Cancelo was the first to do that at Manchester City but no doubt Burnley targeted their right hand side and the Spurs left and that's where the goal has come from now ball given away needlessly by Christian Romero and Sander Berger again strokes the ball up to last and this time inside his own half his touch infield only finds Bissouma now Son finds Kulisewski for Tottenham down the left hand side of the box early cross straight into the grateful arms of Muric who claims it and bowls it out over on dreadful bold out clearance and Bissouma finds Madison Madison trying to make room for a shot at the edge of the area faced up by Sander Berger flicks it to the feet of Kulisewski but Burnley survive again at least for a moment as Odebert flicks it clear but it goes back to Christian Romero VAR's given that goal against Bournemouth it's back to nil-nil Bournemouth against Brentford that Solanke goal ruled out ball into the box from Tottenham headed up in the air by Dara O'Shea Brennan Johnson heads it back from the right hand corner of the box to Pape Sar now drifting down the right wing Johnson takes over and rolls it back further into midfield for Christian Romero everybody bar Vicario inside the Burnley half of the field Kulisewski for Tottenham Hotspur left hand corner of the area swings in the left footed cross Dara O'Shea there again to head clear Jean-Philippe Mateta puts Crystal Palace 2-0 up at Wolverhampton Wanderers and Spurs 1-0 down here against Burnley as we approach the half hour and another mislaid pass by Romero and Charlie Taylor just decides right I'm thumping this downfield yeah but it, had, it has been an excellent reaction from Tottenham from going behind you know getting on the ball getting higher getting players into attacking areas that's where Burnley have to be composed Charlie Taylor there's no reason for him to just put the foot through that there can he try and play out can he find a Cullen who's comfortable in those situations and then the likes of Jacob Brunlas Kulisewski in behind Madison down the right to the left hand side but the cross was behind three players in a white shirt but Porro wins it back goes for goal and tries to recreate what he did against Burnley in the FA Cup 
but that goes way high wide and not particularly handsome and Burnley have a goal kick and they have the lead at Spurs 1-0 with 28 minutes gone on TalkSport 2 well it was an excellent ball from Phil Zewski there you know I think he's cut it back but you called it three players making the same run trying to get right in in the front post you know someone's just got to say right two have gone I'm just going to sit and hold at the, the 18 yard line centrally and they can actually take the ball down in chest and get a shot away there I just don't understand it you know take responsibility of the game That's you know you know your player you know what kind of quality is going to be coming in from the wide area that's Chris and Willemo you can hear alongside me Ian Danter the boos you can hear are for Ari Muric taking his time over using the multi-ball system to find a ball he's happy with to take the goal kick it's like Rafael Nadal deciding which tennis ball does he want to serve with it takes about 30 seconds and winds the umpire up whilst he's doing it almost got himself into yellow card trouble there Ari Muric in the end his goal kick goes straight through to Vicario approaching the half hour mark on Talk Sport 2 Spurs nil, Burnley 1 Burnley, as it stands, keeping themselves in the hunt to have something to play for on the final day of the season at home against Nottingham Forest, who don't play until tea time at the city ground against Chelsea. Regular updates during the course of the game day, phone in on that match with Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Agbonlevo. And Jamie will be watching this back at Talk Sport Towers. And I know the word that's going to be coming into his head, shambles because that's what Spurs are at the minute he, he's probably also saying miles off it Odebert plays out to the left hand side oh that's a foul by Madison on Cullen Everton take the lead against Sheffield United Abdullah Decore for the Toffees who are in such good form lately and a quickly taken free kick from Burnley trying to get Brun Larson in behind Skip again this time it didn't come off but it's a tactic there clearly going to continue to use all afternoon here in North London well it only didn't come off because of the, the poor touch from Brun Larson there if he takes a better touch he's getting in one and one uh, against Vicario again it's currently Spurs nil, Burnley 1 and for the latest odds head to William Hill the official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage where right now Spurs are still 5-4 to four on to win Burnley to win at this position 29 to 10 the draw also 29 to 10 that's all thanks to William Hill get epic value all season with William Hill 18 plus begambleaware.org is the website Spurs have Pedro Porro playing a neat one two with Johnson great run from Porro into the area gets the shot away and Pedro Porro repeats what he did against Burnley in the FA Cup smashes one home from the right hand side of the area suddenly it's all square and suddenly Spurs have got something to play for this Saturday afternoon Burnley just opened up down their left hand side and Pedro Porro said thanks very much I'll make it 1-1 what a goal what a goal this is the link up playing the way he did it but he drives he's got the full half to run into he comes into the 18 yard box and still no, no defenders committed to get back past Munich it is near post here the, the, the power of the strike itself I tell you what Munich has no chance whatsoever the hands are up the ball's in the back of the net before he can get the hand straight it's an excellent finish to be fair the big man shouldn't be beating at his front post like that there but the strike and the power of the shot wow what a goal that is Ian so he scored against Forest in April in the Premier League so his second top flight goal of the season Pedro Porro and now it's 1-1 with 32 minutes played and Burnley have to build again down this right hand side with Asinor towards the right hand corner of the box Odebert on the overlap whips it in near post Larson tries to swing it across the face of goal with two Spurs players on top of him and Christian Romero is giving Kulisewski a volley as the ball snaked out of play for a goal kick to Spurs on our right hand side 12 to half time 1-1 well, like you say, Asignon and Odebert causing some problems down the right-hand side. It was like a, a blind cross whipped in. I've got to say, Brun Larson, great first touch. The, 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 the second touch could have went anywhere. Very, very fortunate the Carrillo was that it never took a little touch. He was already committed at his near post. So that's 14 Premier League games at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in which both teams have found the back of the net. Elsewhere in the Premier League this afternoon, just to recap... Bournemouth nil, Brentford nil, Everton 1, Sheffield United nil, Newcastle nil, Brighton 1, here it's Tottenham 1, Burnley 1, Luton 
Spurs, Spurs come forward. Oh, and Brennan Johnson hits the ball into the side netting after Burnley gave the ball away inside their own defensive third. Muric again the guilty party. It's not the first time he's done that since getting the gloves back in the Burnley goal, but Tottenham could not profit. Stays 1-1. Well, the reaction that Brennan Johnson got from his teammates there, Saar, Madison, not happy with him at all. He's went for goal, he's went for the, the spectacular. Muric swat a couple of metres from the goal line, very, very tight angle for Brennan Johnson. He has to cut it back. He has to cut it back, Ian. But he did not, instead it rolled into the side netting. Elsewhere, West Ham nil, Luton 1, and Wolves nil, Crystal Palace 2. Bettinho caught offside for Burnley as he tried to drift away from Pedro Porro who's just lashed the ball home to equalise for Tottenham Hotspur. And they've had nearly two-thirds of possession Spurs in this first half. Now they have a free kick, about 25 yards from their own goal. Christian Romero sees Pape Sar come short, works it up to Son Jung min neat turn on the halfway line and flicks it out to this left-hand side for Madison. Quick ball out to the near touchline for Kulisevsky. Back it goes in field via Madison to Son Jung Min. Runs into a bit of traffic. So it's flicked right via Pape Sar to Pedro Porro. Right hand corner of the area, early cross is too deep. Goes beyond Kulisevsky, who is the player I think he was aiming for, and it's out of play. It is Tottenham Hotspur 1, Burnley 1 with 10 to half time. Here's Chris Awellamo. Much better from Tottenham. Now moving the ball, getting players forward, but the pace uh, of the passing and the movement has been excellent. Really kind of putting uh, Burnley through their paces at the minute and you know what they're getting options and it's the wrong decision when they get into that attack and thought if it be the, the pass the run the decision to shoot or not that's what's letting Tottenham down at the minute when they get in that they play up to the attack and thought is outstanding and then it falls away Burnley win the ball in the centre circle with Sander Berger who's pass set up Jakobrun Larsson for the opener now Josh Cullen plays the ball out to Charlie Taylor on the left hand side in the sunshine pitch on the far side by the east stand is still bathed in this glorious afternoon sunshine the near side to us is in shade as O'Shea brings the ball over halfway chips it down the right wing for Asignon brings it down neatly tries to nutmeg Kulisevsky now he's fouled Kulisevsky uh, skip and it'll be a free kick to Tottenham Hotspur in their left back position and Asignon almost got himself a yellow card for trying to stop him taking it well in fairness to all of us kept there it was excellent defending as soon as Asignon got it what did he do he got right in his face and then he made the contact then got his body between ball and man one possession and then he just felt that little bit of pressure from Asignon went to ground great defending there from all of us kept in the right position I mentioned before kickoff that Spurs had dropped 20 points from winning positions Burnley before today had dropped 24 and they were in front here but Spurs level and pushing forward again with James Madison. Kulisevsky out on the left wing, receives it now, tries to whip it across the 18-yard line. Skip took a touch and was trying to dart towards the dead ball line to get hold of a second touch. But Muric came out from his goal and clutched hold of it for Burnley, 1-1. Well, Oliver Skip finds himself, you know, in the 18-yard box there, you know, just left of the, the, the penalty spots. So it's a great first touch. You know, it's, it's fired from Kulisevsky there uh, great first touch over the defender and he just couldn't get on the other end of it but fair play Oliver Skip being there in the first place he's got a throw now Oliver Skip midway point of the Burnley half after a, another shanked clearance from Ari Muric went straight out of play on the full for a Spurs throw here's Madison getting the ball down the left hand side of the box slips as he tried to cross and that met with the ball straight into the chest of Muric once again 1-1 well how many times have Tottenham got into that left hand side and it's fired across that Muric can just take it as midriff someone has to break the neck to get across the face of the, the, the goalkeeper there just a touch if it's the, the outside of the foot or a diving header but that's 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 where the, all the balls have been going so far or they have to just mix it up and try and cut it back nice quick feet from Sander Berger in the centre circle for Burnley at 1-1 Charlie Taylor flicks it down the left hand side for Vitinho level with the edge of the area he's onside gives the ball back to Charlie Taylor now back in field for Sander Berger who left Sheffield United in the summer Dara O'Shea into the feet of Brun Larsen trying to play through the legs of Bissouma to find Foster but it's won back by Kulisevsky then Kulisevsky's dispossessed by Jakob Brun Larsen Asignon on this near side, the Burnley right, finds Josh Cullen, 
And now Berger in the centre circle. Plays it backwards and square to Estev. And Charlie Taylor once again receives possession. A bit more patient from Burnley in this build-up and holding on to the ball for a little while longer. Larson tries to bend his run to get it behind Skip. He's in behind Skip, not sure whether the flag's going to go up. Skip gets back at him anyway, and a corner is given. I'm not sure whether Jakob and Larson have bent his run in time, but it's been given as a corner kick for Burnley at the south stand end anyway, 1-1. Well, you look at uh, Oliver Skip's reaction and Brun Larson's reaction. Brun Larson was walking back, so it did come off. Yeah, spot on. Referee linesman's got that, uh, got that wrong. You know, it's definitely a, a goal kick to Tottenham, but again, you've got to be switched on and capitalise. You called it, you're coming to their Burnley. Yeah, they're, they're getting the passes, a bit, bit more patient. That information's coming on from Vincent Company. They're, they're just kicking the ball through. They have to keep possession of the ball more, move it and invite uh, Tottenham out. Remember, Burnley have to win to give themselves a chance of something to fight for on the final day of the season at home to Nottingham Forest, who play later. They've got a corner at the south stand end where it meets the west stand that we're sat in. Right-footed outswinger from Jakob Brun Larsen. Onto the six-yard line, cleared away. Retrieved by Vitinho in the centre of the Spurs half and under pressure from Kulisewski. Turns it back for Muric, midway point of his own half. And he clips a lovely ball out to the left wing to find Lyle Foster. Acres of space, but he's offside in actual fact, Lyle Foster. And so Spurs get a free kick and can clear their lines. Five to the break on TalkSport 2. It's one apiece. Yeah, I don't mind that from Munich. At the end of the day, it's the attacking player Foster has to know. I thought it was tight. I don't know if we're going to get another look at it or not, but uh, you can see by the, the body language of uh, Foster that I think the linesman's got it spot on. But better from Burnley. You know, I think using the ball, keeping possession, you know, trying to find a man rather than just put the foot through it and let it go anywhere. Madison finds Skip and now Dejan Kulisewski for Tottenham down this left-hand side and Skip will go back into his own half for Christian Romero St Mirren nil, Kilmarnock 1 and Hearts 1, Dundee nil up in Scotland Romero midway point of the Burnley half just taking the game down to walking pace now Mickey van der Ven has possession Skip just to his left plays into the feet of Pape Saar who's having to run back towards the halfway line to keep possession Porro good ball out for Brennan Johnson just touched it round Charlie Taylor but Sanderberger was there as the covering defensive midfielder to win it back for Burnley not only have we got both of the championship playoff semi-final first legs on Talk Sport tomorrow lunchtime but Tottenham's women are taking part in the women's FA Cup final live on Talk Sport 2 2.30 we start at Wembley Adrian Durham Joe Shannon and Courtney Sweetman Kirk your commentary team for the women's FA Cup final and then Monday night football Liverpool at Villa is an 8 o'clock kickoff live and exclusive Son Jung Min goes for goal and wins a corner as it hits Sander Berger from the edge of the D the shot came from the Spurs captain and Spurs have a corner away to our left 1-1 yeah Sander Berger switched on you know that's the danger man always in and around them there done enough got the block in but you can see the body language of Sander Berger he's, he is breathing he's working a lot he's working hard Son's looking fresh as you know but he's, he's getting lively uh, it's a fantastic opportunity that he created for himself there Hon Hon Son. corner in the northwest corner right footed in swinger to come from James Madison strikes it now deep to the far post beyond everybody Romero tried to get his head in it but it was just over hit by Madison and Burnley will have themselves a goal kick as we tick round towards the 43rd minute so it's 1-1 one, one here elsewhere Bournemouth and Brentford are still goalless Solanke had that VAR goal ruled out Everton 1-0 up on Sheffield United Brighton 1-0 up at Newcastle Luton 1 up at West Ham and Palace 2 up at Wolves Odebear for Burnley just trying to drift away from Romero oh Vitinho caught on his heels uh, he could have turned but he gets the ball presented back to him anyway left hand side Vitinho trying to drift past Bissouma goes down no foul says the referee and Bissouma showed good strength there to win it back for Tottenham and plays into the feet of Madison but both teams can give the ball away in the strangest areas at times Christy Wellimo 1-1 one, one. yeah very bizarre I think Vitinho thought he was offside so he's trying to kind of let the ball go initially but then it just shows you Basima, fantastic strength. Just got himself body, shoulder to shoulder. Vitino wasn't going anywhere. And then, and then he 
too easily just gives the ball away again after such uh, such good work. So Spurs have a free kick. Rolled back to the centre of their own half and Van de Ven. Madison now takes over, just shy of the halfway line. Being watched by Jakob and Larsen, so it pirouettes away from him temporarily. Larsen stays goal side, so it slid into the centre circle for Pape Sar. Now Romero drifts over the halfway line, collects the ball, slides it down the right hand side of the box for Porro. Porro acrobatically went for goal as the ball ran across his body, he didn't get hold of it at all. And Burnley have a goal kick, and Pedro Porro, I think, I think he thinks he wants to be on a hat trick. Was one, that, one. Was a cross, cross shot that? Or what? Because he's, he's starting looking, he's waving his hands looking at players. Why were you not there? Definitely looked like a shot to me. Yeah. Ross County won Motherwell 2 up in Scotland. Remember that Scottish Premiership is split into two separate groups of six a championship group and a relegation group. Falkirk back in the championship next year. That's good news for me. That time. Falkirk wants a Scottish Premiership regular. Those, that ship has sailed. Sorry, Uncle Jimmy. Spurs 1, Burnley 1. We're moving into two minutes of added time here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at the end of this first period. Jakob Brun Larsen for Burnley. Porro with the equaliser for Tottenham. Van der Ven with a cushion header down for Kulisewski, who was pushed in the back by Asignon. It's quite clever how Kulisewski bought the foul there, knew that. Asignon was in at his back and got pushed over and Spurs have the free kick. But Asignon has, has to know better. You know, he's, how many times has he, has he, has he made this, the same foul? You know, if, if you're going to be so aggressive and on the front foot and put your hands on the back, then the player's going to go down. You know, don't let them off. Stay away from them. Keep your focus on the ball at all time. You make sure you're low centre of gravity and then you can put the challenge in. Son was the target. A ball clipped down the right-hand side, but Bettinho got there first for Burnley. Saar can't keep it in play and Burnley have themselves a throw down their left hand side remember Burnley have got to go for it at some point they're level here they were in front but Vincent Company knows that a point is really not going to be enough because of the massive points uh, goal differential a draw theoretically keeps Burnley's hopes alive but they've got a goal difference of minus 35 at the start of the day compared to Nottingham Forest's minus 18. So you really don't expect a goal swing of 17 goals to work in your favour on the last day. I think the important thing as well, Ian, is, is to stay in the game. OK, Tottenham have got back into it at 1-1. Don't go hell for leather, but make sure you're still in the game. 25, 30 minutes to go, and then I think there'll be some changes made or maybe a tactical switch. Madison for Spurs, plays the ball up to the edge of the area. Pape Sarr was running across the line of the ball, just couldn't keep hold of it. Given away by Odebear to Porro. Son Jong Min winding up for a shot at the edge of the area, being closed down, so he leaves it for James Madison. Madison, again, tries a little pirouette in midfield. Can't get away from Wilson Odebear, and he will bring it clear. With the two minutes of minimum stoppage time, it's done. And Foster has got him behind Skip. Chance at the end of the half for Burnley, being forced wide by Kulisewski, lays it back to the edge of the area, the drive from Larson is straight at Vicario, and he bowls the ball out, and referee Jared Gillett says that's enough for the first half, and right at the end of that first 45-plus minutes of action, Burnley had the chance to retake the lead that they got midway through the half, when Jakob Brun Larson was played in behind, lovely defence-splitting pass by Sander Berger, and Larson finished clinically to give Burnley the lead, but seven minutes later, Pedro Porro was allowed the freedom of North London to charge in from the right flank, get into the edge of the area and crash the ball right-footed past Ari Muric at his near post. But there are warning signs for both sides that this is not the end of the goal scoring and for a 14th Premier League game in a row at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, both teams have found the back of the net at half-time here on TalkSport 2. It's Tottenham Hotspur 1, Burnley 1. Thank you, Ian Danto. It does feel like there's more goals in this game, but as it stands, a game finishing with this scoreline would relegate Burnley back to the Championship at the first time of asking without giving themselves a fighting chance of taking it to the final day. Chris Owellamo, I'm looking at my notepad. I've got a couple of things written down. High quality, too many individual mistakes. A bit of sloppiness mixed in with the high quality football. Yeah, I have to agree with that. You know, I think on both 
in both teams' part. You know, I think Tottenham, fantastic quality, playing a defensive and middle third. As soon as they get the attacking third, it's a great, great goal from uh, from Poro. You know, I think he struck it ever so well, but too many times it's just the wrong pass. The player not making the run to get across the front of the goalkeeper when time and time again the ball's getting whipped across into that area, that danger area. It's a fantastic ball in. Just break your neck to get across. Just a single touch to tap it goalwards. All the pace is on the cross there, Chris. So I think, uh, and then defensively, we called it Skip. He's been found out a good couple of times in that left back position. And again, uh, the, the the opportunity right there that fell to Brun Larson comes off that that right hand side as well. The goal comes to Oliver Skip uh, in advanced areas, leaving that space in behind. So I'm, I'll be surprised if he comes out. But mind you, who else is going to go there? You know, go to, go to a three play, play him as a kind of wing back. I just I don't understand why. Again, Ange Postecoglou is, is, is leaving it so open like that because that's where all the trouble is coming from. Burnley in possession after they, they conceded the, the equalising goal. Completely everything was just kicking through, not keeping possession of the ball, not using the quality they've got, but then they've got kind of back into the groove again. It's a result that benefits neither of these teams, really, or it's a half-time score that would benefit neither of these teams. Who will be happier in that half-time team talk? I think both managers have got a right to kind of to lose their head a little bit. I think Ange Postecoglou, I've got friends, Tottenham fans, messaging me saying they're, oh, they're already in Dubai. You know, they're, they're, they're on holiday. But with the way that the, the players are, are talking, talk about, yeah, we'll be competitive about next season, that surprises me. This season's not finished yet. You know, this it's very evident that they're already thinking, all right, well, they've got the holiday head on, the, the holidays are planned, the, the bags are packed, and they're just kind of seeing out the season. But surely there's more to play for. So I think, uh, I think Vincent Company can say, OK, it's been better. It's a poor goal to concede. I don't understand why you don't go have Estev, Taylor, someone going and committing. Huge Poro gap there. down it was the left, wasn't it? Even when he came into the 18-yard box, no one went and said, right, you know what? I think Muric has to do better. I thought he struck it very well, but, you know, as, as a goalkeeper, when you're at that, it, you know, you've got to get something on it. You know, even though it was struck well, you know, take it in the face, put a hand up, you've got to do something there. Uh, so I think Vincent Company will say, OK, stay in the game. You're going to get chances. It's about putting those chances away. The, the, the opportunity from Patino. What's What is he doing? You know, I know he had to generate the power, but he's got to go. Just near so this post. is the header he went back across goal he when back. he's got the whole near post yeah. to aim at. Well, he's went back across goal. It wasn't even uh, towards the back post. It was right at the carry It was a comfortable save for him that he put up. And then it's down to Foster to kind of go and get the route. But I think with the quality and the time that he's got, it's an excellent ball. Uh, I think it was Odebert, wasn't it? Yeah, that's just hung it up, up to the hung back up. post. It's an excellent boss. I'd have put the, the ball, the defender, the goalkeeper yeah. in the back of there. With kiss, that. kiss, good night. It was an unbelievable ball. So he has to do the bit, and that's the moment. Small margins, Chris. Small margins puts the points on the board. And just a quick word on Brennan Johnson, who he absolutely loves Nottingham Forest, and how important it would be for him today to score against Burnley and do his old club a favour. He's had a couple of real good chances. Yeah, well, the first one is a great connection. You know, I think Muric comes out, thinks he can claims it with the hands. It was the wrong decision. I've got to say, very, very quickly, he gets himself back. It's an excellent save with the left hand I think Brennan Johnson everything right the next one I've got big issues with the game the means back. a lot it's got to be cut back I know Muric is two two metres off the line and for a professional footballer you look at a tight angle you know you, he probably thinks and he has got it in the bank but when it's 100% opportunity at goal if you cut it back you know, it was sad, Madison, and I tell you what, they were not happy. No. They weren't happy. I think the, sh the shot got pulled over Brennan Johnson's face after it as well, where you're trying to hide yourself a little bit. But you know what? He's got the confidence to take it on on another day, puts that in the back of the net, and like you say, he's the hero then, isn't he? Yeah, there is no hiding place in a stadium like this with 60,000 fans around. Chris, dance, take a breather. We're going to look ahead to tonight's Premier League action with Now Sports. Stay ahead of the game on Talk Sport 2 with Now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest versus Chelsea. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports 18 Plus, stream by internet, terms apply. Before we do that, just time to tell you about a late goal in the first half between Newcastle and Brighton. Sean Longstaff has got the 1 1 equaliser for Newcastle United in that game, still pushing to seal their place in Europe. Jeff Peters is with us now to look ahead to Nottingham Forest against Chelsea. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Chris. Afternoon to you. Yeah, really good. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Forest had a busy old week, unsuccessful in their appeal against the points deduction, but they will be as good as safe with a win. That's a huge motivation today. Yeah, it's in their hands, and I think that's the, that's the important thing for for Forest. They know that despite having the points deduction, that what they do in the last two games of the season, 
it is up to them. I was sitting in the press room as the, the goals were flying in around the Premier League with Burton in front. That's uh, Burton. Burnley in front and obviously Luton winning as well. And there was one or two sort of nervous uh, <laughs> moments from the from the Forest contingent but there was certainly a, a punch of the air when that goal went in at the at the London Stadium with Tottenham equalising but uh, obviously looting in front it means that there's a little bit more pressure on Forest obviously they're coming up against the Chelsea side they've only lost one of the last 12 that they're in pretty good nick Chelsea seem to be moving in the right direction Forest, are they any better than they were under Steve Cooper? Maybe scoring one or two more goals, but perhaps a little bit more vulnerable at the back. But as I say, it's in their hands. They know what they've they've got to do. They're you know delighted that that Burnley are not winning. Obviously, Burnley have to win to be able to to catch, potentially catch Forest, and the two meet on the final day of the season. But, you know, listen, with a with a, a noisy city ground today, last home game of the season, the fans can be really important here. And if they can get at that win today, then they can breathe that, that little bit easier. Yeah, it will be noisy. You mentioned Chelsea's run that they've been on all season, it feels. We've been quite correctly, quite harsh on Chelsea. They've not been pulling up any trees until the last few weeks. What's Maurizio Pochettino done to turn things around? I mean that's a that's a good question. Were they as bad as results suggested then? Are they as good as results suggest now? Perhaps that there's 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 a bit of both in all of that. You know, you look at somebody like uh, Nicholas Jackson who has come in for a lot of criticism. Six goal involvements in his past five Premier League games. Uh, obviously that is you know important Cole Palmer what a player that, that he's been this season 30 goal involvements 21 uh, goals and, and nine assists Premier League player of the month you know I think I think certain players have just stepped up that little bit as well maybe they've been getting a little bit a little bit more luck on certain occasions that perhaps they weren't getting earlier in the season but there, there does seem to be more optimism um, although, you know, Chelsea may well turn around in the summer and say to Pochettino, we want to go down a different route. I think there's a lot of Chelsea fans who would, would quite like to keep him because they can they can see progress. But some fans want more progress and they want more things quicker. But perhaps that's a, uh, a societal issue that everybody wants everything now. Yeah, they certainly do. Jeff Peters, thanks for joining us. Some really interesting comments from Pochettino as well, saying, oh, they could sack me. Maybe I might walk away. We'll have to wait and see. That was a look ahead to this afternoon's Premier League action. Don't forget that with now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest against Newcastle live today, contract-free with a Now membership. Search Now Sports. Stay ahead of the game on TalkSport 2 with Now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest versus Chelsea live today, contract-free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports, 18 plus, stream our internet, terms apply. You're listening to Game Day Live on TalkSport 2 with me, Chris Latcham. It is 1-1 between Tottenham and Burnley and Burnley cannot afford to lose. All the half-time classifieds and the second half commentary of Spurs against Burnley is next. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest versus Chelsea. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports, 18 plus, stream via internet, terms apply. Hope there won't be any VAR delays today. Heard that rumour about their striker. Can't wait to see what the pundits make of that booking. Looking forward to the match report on this one. When it comes to football, never miss a story. Get the best news, opinion, interviews and gossip at thesun.co.uk. For the football lowdown every day, it's thesun.co.uk. You're a hustler, boy. <laughs> you know me. I just eat my KFC with free popcorn chicken every Friday. You mean we just eat? Whoa. Find your own deal, Nicholas. That's cold. Come on, man. One bite. Get Friday freebies from McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Express and Local Wheats for freebie Fridays and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? 
exclusive. Subject to availability and serving times. Participate in stores. Check free item and required minimum spend on the store page. Fridays only. Brands and free items may vary weekly. See justeat.co.uk for details. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Sipping a morning coffee out on the terrace. Good morning, Mr. Squirrel. Morning. The kids building a treehouse in the garden. I'm living my perfect childhood. But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. McDonald's are making small improvements to our classic burgers, hearing our 100% British and Irish beef patties so they're even juicier. And we're serving them hotter for meltier cheese, all in new toastier buns. The classics. Now a little more. Mmm. Comparison with prior classic burgers. Served after 11am, subject to availability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether you're drilling or decorating, get the job done with Big Spring offers on trade essentials at Screwfix. Upgrade your kit and save £10 on the DeWalt brushless cordless combi drill. Now only $159.99. And get rolling on those paint jobs with two for £26 on 10 litre Fortress Trade contract matte paint. Shop Spring Offers now on the app at screwfix.com or in store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least June 2nd. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Rent from the best lineup in the UK. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the English Football League. This is game day. Halftime classifieds. Yeah, welcome back to Game Day Live on TalkSport 2 with me, Chris Latcham. Let's take a look at those halftime scores, starting with... Premier League. Earlier, whopping win for Manchester City. 4-0 away at Fulham, closing in on a fourth title. Bournemouth and Brentford, they're 0-0. Everton are beating Sheffield United 1-0 at home. Newcastle scored late in the half to level up with Brighton at 1-1. Here at Tottenham, they're drawing with Burnley. 1-1, Burnley need a win. Huge potential upset at the London Stadium. Luton need a win and they are winning at West Ham 1-0. And Crystal Palace are leading Wolves by two goals to nil. Elsewhere in the Scottish Premiership earlier, Celtic won the Old Firm 2-1. They're closing in on the Scottish title. Hearts are 1-0 up against Dundee. St Mirren 1-0 down at home to Kilmarnock. And in the bottom six, St Johnston fighting against the relegation playoff. They're 1-0 up away at Livingston. And Ross County are 2-1 down at home to Motherwell. In the Scottish Championship playoffs, Hamilton are 2-1 up in the second leg against Alloa Athletic. It's 4-3 Hamilton over the two ties. Half time in that that one and nil nil between Inverness and Montrose and nil nil overall as the players begin to make their way out after half time plenty to chew over then as we get ready for this second half with our commentary team Ian Danter and Chris Uelamo will get to dance but Chris just before we start what will Vincent Company have said to his men who must win today? I just think better quality from the back. You know, I think uh, I think when they're getting into attacking areas, I think they're using that right hand side well, getting a lot of joy. No, they've got they've got themselves into some excellent uh, positions. I just feel like that unforced errors playing out from the back, wrong decisions. Munich's distribution has been so so poor as well in that first half. I just think it's uh, it's the right idea for Munich. Can you find the likes of Brun Larsen? Can you find the likes of Lyle Foster uh, with better quality? But then, yeah, when you when they get the ball down and they use it well and they're moving it quickly, Tottenham can't get near them. So I think that's just, yeah, be patient. Be brave enough to get the ball and play with the ball. But when you get into the attacking areas, then, you know, it's small margin, be clinical. Uh, you're looking at Tottenham. The other side, I think they, they, they kind of grew into the game. I think after they, they, they got the equalising goal, you could see then the confidence was there, moving the ball. Now they've got that energy in the team, you know, that dynamism that they can they can move forward with, with, with fluency and, and pace and looks nice on the eye. It's just the end product was letting them down. And we're about to kick off. Dance, take it away. Thanks, Chris. Burnley in their chain strip of the dark shirts with a bit of light blue trim. Black shorts and socks they'll be kicking towards the north stand to our left their supporters in the northeast corner still bathed in late afternoon sunshine Spurs in all white kicking towards the giant south stand to our immediate right 
And we're running through the lineups as Pape Sar wins a free kick. No changes at half time. Vicario in goal for Spurs. Poro, Romero, Van der Ven, Skip. Saar, Basuma, Madison, Kulisevsky, Son, Johnston. And as for Burnley, Murich the keeper. Asignon, O'Shea, Esteb, Taylor, Cullen and Berger. Larson, Odebert, Bettinho and Foster. And Spurs working the ball down the right-hand side. And Kulisevsky started on the right-hand side. They've switched him and Brennan Johnson. So he's up against Charlie Taylor and he's won a throw. I don't know whether that's just him keeping away Kulisevsky from Asignon or vice versa. Well, it's an, it's an absolute joke from the referee there. Uh, Kulisevsky is, is basically grabs uh, Charlie Taylor, both ho holding each other. Yeah, the free kick's given because obviously Kulisevsky can't advance. But Charlie Taylor gets a yellow card as well. I think they've just got to have an understanding there. Both players are, was at it. Yes, it is a free kick, but not a yellow card. So Porro with the free kick, midway point of the Burnley half. Only three or four yards in from this near touch line. Burnley holding their line at the edge of the D. Porro to address it right-footed. Early run from Son. He's offside, he couldn't use him. Instead, Romero tries to win the first header. Drops at the far post almost for Brennan Johnson, but expertly hooked clear in the nick of time by Asignan, who's now making a run down the right-hand side because of a handball by James Madison, who gets a yellow card. The ball won't get to Asignan. So a couple of very quick yellow cards issued by Jared Gillett at the start of this second half. Now, 1-1. Well, there's no way that Jared Gillett can see if this hits Madison's hand or not because it's, it's at the other side. Did his assistant tell him then? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see it on the monitor because you can look at the, the language of, of Madison. <sighs> well, it looks like it hit his arm and he was his body was not in a natural position, you would say, as the ball went across his body. Anyway, free kick for Burnley taken by Dara O'Shea, chipping it down the inside right channel. Again, it looks like Burnley will try and target Oliver Skip in this unfamiliar left-back position that he's played today as much as they can. That's how the goal came about on the 25-minute mark, converted by Jakob Run Larsen. And here is Skip. In fact, it's uh, Van der Ven working it back to Vicario, the keeper. Christian Romero, close down by Odebert, gives it back to his goalkeeper, Vicario, edge of his six-yard line. And there, Skip very calmly chipping the ball out to Romero, who's now got Burnley players moving out of the way so he can charge up to the halfway line and keeps going. Christian Romero slides it out to Porro on the right wing down beneath us. Faced up by Vitinho, jinking past him this way and that, and then Vitinho gets an important foot in, but it is a Spurs throw. 1-1, one, one, three minutes gone, second half. Yeah, it's a great little timely challenge from Vitinho though, but Poro, I'm a big fan, you know, so much energy. You know, I think he's, he's twisting and turning there, just couldn't get that yard, but he's looking for that early cross as well. Ball's back with Christian Romero for Tottenham, works the ball neatly and filled to Bissouma. Bissouma, faced up by Josh Cullen, one of the other players on a yellow card from the first half of this match. Kulisevsky, right-hand side. Oh, lovely flick to get Porro away. He nutmegs Sander Berger, but then back comes Charlie Taylor and manages to win possession back at the corner flag for the Clarets, but his clearance only finds Bissouma, who in turn looks for Kulisevsky down the right-hand side of the box, pulls it back for Son. Has a while to get the ball under control, but still finds Pedro Porro once again. Right-hand side, Madison takes over, whips across with far too much on it. And Pape Sar did superbly to at least try and keep it in play down by the corner flag on the far side. I'm not sure what James Madison was trying to do there. 1-1. One, one. I think he's just got too much height on it. I think he just wanted to whip it between the, the last defender and goalkeeper for anyone just advancing into those areas. That's the kind of ball that they've been playing from, from both sides. But he's just got too much purchase and uh, leaning back a little bit there, James. Ball's back inside the Spurs half with uh, Guillermo Vicario. Spurs aiming for Europe this season has been their first since 2009-10 that they haven't been in a European competition to split up their week. Europa League looks likely, Champions League still possible but they need to win. Here's Kulosevsky going on the outside of Taylor, plays it into the near post. The run was from Madison but the clearance from Dara O'Shea who's been pretty much where Burnley have needed in most of this game so far, puts it up for a Spurs throw. Yeah, it was better though, wasn't it? You know, that ball again, just inviting for anyone to run across the face, Darosche had to be alive to it. 
James Madison tries to find Porro inside the box. Estev this time with the important clearance, getting the foot in. But Madison has it about right-hand corner of the box, rolls it along the 18-yard line for Son. Son finds Johnson, left-hand side of the area, gives it back to his captain, Son. Rolls, <laughs> rolls his foot on the ball and wins a corner as it hits Josh Cullen and goes behind at the south stand in. Spurs applying some pressure at the start of this second half. 1-1. Yeah, moving it really, really well. Picking up all second balls. They are signing. Brennan Johnson linking up very well. You just think Stan's got to pull the trigger a little bit earlier. He's twisting and turning. Just allowing whoever it is, if it's Cullen, if it's Sanderbell, just to get the challenge in and get the block in. It's Madison with a right-footed in-swinger. Strong header clear by... Dara O'Shea, Odebear took his time over getting it further clear, almost presented the ball back to Tottenham Hotspur. Instead, the ball is sent up towards the halfway line and Spurs win it back. Kulisewski, who's won a throw against Josh Cullen on this near side. Cullen's got to be careful, don't kick the ball away. You're on a yellow card. Yeah, they've just got to be switched on, haven't they? Concentrated, but Tottenham are winning every single second ball. There are three opportunities, Burnley had the chance to kind of Clear, clear the areas there and it's Tottenham that's, that's getting it putting the head on it drop, the drop ball putting, getting the foot on it what do you make of this switch I spotted at the start of the half with Johnson going left and Kulisewski right in that front three yeah well I, I, I thought Kulisewski was getting a lot of joy Brennan Johnson had his opportunities it's yeah maybe it's uh, to give uh, Oliver Skip a little bit more Porro tries to get across in from the dead ball line but Charlie Taylor did well to block for Burnley but Spurs keep it alive 1-1 7 minutes gone second half on Talk Sport 2 no further goals anywhere else in the Premier League after the restart in the 3 o'clock games Manchester City won 4-0 at lunchtime lovely play between Madison and Porro cross to the far post Johnson tried to help it back across the face he got for Son and Dara O'Shea there yet again for Burnley to whack it clear with the Spurs captain lurking just behind him the offside flag had gone up anyway, courtesy of Darren Can. 1-1. One, one. Well, the link-up between uh, Madison and, and Saar there was, was outstanding. And then the ball in for Ben and Johnson. And selfless, he, he puts it across goal. I think he's got the quality to, to take that on the full. Very much like the Decanio, West Ham. Take it with the right foot and just go for goal there. It's an excellent ball from James Madison. Murich clears downfield for Burnley. Remember, Burnley have got to try and get their noses back in front. Any result other than a win means that they are relegated. A draw technically means they can stay up, but it's just not likely that they'll get a 17-goal swing on the final day of the season. So it's win or bust for Burnley. Back it goes to Bissouma at the edge of his own penalty area. Clears it downfield, but Taylor wins a strong header on halfway ahead of Kulisewski, but Spurs have got possession back. Madison plays it out to the left wing lovely first touch from Brennan Johnson gets the ball out of his feet running at Asignon comes in field past another man left for Madison tried to drive and it was blocked at source by Josh Cullen and Asignon lovely first touch from him brings the ball clear for Burnley but then he shows too much of that to Pape Sarr Asignon stayed down claiming he was pushed in the face Spurs play on Son Young min inside the area right hand side Porro on the overlap oh went for goal from the tightest of angles smacked it into the side netting and it's a goal kick to Burnley 1-1 well I, I've got to ask questions of asking you there you know I think uh, Saar the hands were up but there was nothing in it and I know you you try and make it more elaborate to try and kind of force the referee's decision but he's he laid down for about 30 seconds he's still in that area but there you're looking at Poro he's got to go across goal again you know it's those little those, those decisions isn't it it's tight even there I don't even think it's making it across if he does go across goal with power there nine minutes gone in the second half Ian Dancho and Chris Willemo with you Burnley coming forward for the first time almost this half Asignol is dispossessed by Oliver Skip and a yellow card it was a foul by Skip before he won the ball initially Jared Gillett made the the ball signal with his hands but has decided that the emergency left back should be cautioned 
and Spurs have had the majority of this opening 10 minutes of this second half but now Burnley have a free kick midway point of the Tottenham half 1-1 yeah they've, they've definitely started the better you know whatever's been said at half time is, is working Oliver Skipton I don't think he needs to take a yellow I think asingon has got away I think he's just got to be straight line running allow Van der Ven to slow him up and then can he intervene and can he help out there but to, to take him down what a rugby challenge from the back still a yellow card to take so this free kick is to the right of centre there's a one man wall of Kulosevsky standing about 25 yards out the rest of the Tottenham defenders holding their line at the 18 yard line Burnley in their dark chain strip have this free kick towards the north stand end Jakob Brun Larsen is the man hands on hips standing over the free kick Foster and Taylor are the players furthest across to this near side on the, the far post and Foster and Skip are having a bit of a shoving match at the edge of the area lots of jostling for position as Larson now addresses the ball right footed clips in front of goal and a very comfortable catch for Vicario who bowls it out over arm for Kulusevski who can collect it just before halfway but Asignon gets a foot in puts it out for a throw Tottenham 1 Burnley won you're listening to Talk Sport 2's game day exclusive with 11 gone in the second half Chris Willemann yeah it was excellent from Vicario there comes out good strong hands and then uh, just throws to Kulusevski there and uh, Asignon good defending tight as you like and then just make sure that the, the challenge was timely as well but that's what you want you want an outlet you don't have to just play it out short tippy tappy stuff all the time when it's on to go long with quality it can go long you're listening to Tottenham 1 Burnley 1 on Talk Sport 2 with Now don't forget that with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Nottingham Forest versus Chelsea live today contract free with a Now membership to search Now Sports Odebear wins it back for Burnley getting into the edge of the area oh he gets past his man drives the shot and it's tipped over the bar for a corner kick might even have taken a touch of Christian Romero but Wilson Odebear jinked his way just inside the area cracked the shot goalwards and he's disappointed that it's only a corner 1-1 one, one. well cool of this, he loses possession the Odebear gets the ball and he's driving at uh, Romero he takes it inside, he's got away from his man. He can take another touch there, Ian. I don't know why he took the shot on. I think he's got to take another touch, open the goal, makes it very, very hard for Vicario, then he picks his side. I think uh, he allowed uh, Romero to get a, a touch off the back of his calf for it to go over, and it is a corner kick. For Josh Cullen at the northwest corner, down to our left hand side, a right footed in swinger to come from the Burnley midfielder whipped in now deep to the far post headed back across goal by O'Shea but straight into the thigh of Van der Ven O'Shea goes out to retrieve the ball right hand side tosses it back into the area Estev goes up with a header and it's just landed on the roof of the net from Maxim Estev with Vicario at full stretch goal at the London Stadium West Ham have equalised against Luton James Ward-Prowse makes it 1-1 so Luton would not draw level on points with Nottingham Forest as things stand now. 1-1 one, one here too as we approach the hour mark on TalkSport 2. Good chance for Maxime Estev there, Chris. Yeah, massive. You know, I think he'd done everything right. He couldn't kind of get up and, and meet the ball at its highest point, so he's just kind of cushioned the ball and he's put it back where it came from and I've got to say Vicario was scrambling, never got a hand to it and it just comes off the top of the crossbar there, Ian. It's a fantastic opportunity and it's, you know, it nearly, nearly dropped in. Muric thumps the ball downfield, the Burnley keeper. Asignon is penalised for a foul on Skip. And it will be a free kick to Tottenham, which Skip wants to take quickly. Passes along the deck to Madison inside his own half, being faced up by Cullen. Drives it out to Brennan Johnson. Madison's gone again. Brilliant run from James Madison. He's in behind, up to the edge of the area. Teasing up a shot, goes with his left. Great save, Muric. Had to make it and did. James Madison trying to go all the way, maybe didn't connect with the shot the way that he wanted. Muric still had to make the save and he did so. Well, it's excellent from James Madison, just a link-up play and then to get in behind. I've got to say, Josh Cullen came out of position and tried to get as close as he could to James Madison there, got nowhere near. He got in behind and I've got to say, he'll be disappointed he's not uh, he's not put that one in the back of net. It's an excellent save from Muric. But I think Madison, once he's kind of skipped past O'Shea there, you've put it in the roof of the net, aren't you? You're putting the, the foot in it. Balls back with Van der Ven for Tottenham who are once again trying to force the issue as we get towards the hour mark on Talk Sport 2 Kulisevsky on the right hand side as he has been since the restart 
sends the ball back in field via Bissouma for Son Jong Min. Now Porro on this right wing, just down beneath our commentary position. Goes past Vitinho, clips the ball in field for Bissouma. Lovely spin from Kulisevsky down the right hand side of the box, but the cross is blocked by Charlie Taylor. And now it's a race between La Foster and Mickey van der Ven to get to the ball first on halfway. Van der Ven did get to the ball first, but it's out of play for a Burnley throw. 1-1. Yes, yeah, a, a good running race there. I've got Van de Ven was was uh, was comfortable. I thought he should have went back to Vicario just with the pass, but he just tried to give uh, the light the little feint and, and take it with outside of his right and turn. I've got to say, I think uh, Foster uh, had, had it was a telephone call there. He's uh, he's read it well. Hearts two, Dundee nil in the Scottish Prem. We've got the Dundee derby back next year. We have in the Scottish Premiership. Ball's in the centre circle, one back by Pape Saar via a ricochet. Spurs piling forward, Saar tries to feed it into Kulisevsky down the right-hand side of the box and Sander Berger back defending, just toe-ended it behind for a corner kick to Tottenham at the south stand end, 1-1. We'll just look at Son, look at Brennan Johnson having an absolute go because I think Saar can, can find either one. Yeah, they've out to Kulisevsky who I think has to just fire it across first time in between last defender and goalkeeper there. He has two options, central or goal. He's just tried a little bit of trickery, just couldn't get away from the step. Madison with this latest corner for Spurs at the south stand in. Right-footed out swinger. Whips around the six-yard line. Oh, Van der Ven headed it against his own man, I think, Romero. And it's been cleared by Burnley up to halfway, but nobody in a dark Burnley shirt is retrieved instead by Oliver Skip. And he plays a little one-two with Bissouma. Square ball for Pedro Porro. 1-1 one, one it remains on TalkSport 2. Space for Kulisevsky down this right-hand side. Porro pairing down the overlap. But Kulisevsky tried to find Madison instead. Got his pass all wrong. Huge frustration for both Madison and especially Pedro Porro. Burnley have a goal kick. 1-1. One, one. Well, I've seen that a couple of times now. Porro turns around and the look and the body language to... Kulisevsky there it's, it's, there's just no need you know I don't I don't get it yeah you're all in it together to, to win but the way that the, the likes of Saar and Madison with, with Brennan Johnson with the opportunity in the first half you're all in it to try and win the game yeah I understand go and have a little word but don't make it evident to everyone in the stadium that you're that you're disgusted by the, the decision that he made free kick as Dara O'Shea clattered into James Madison no substitutions made yet. We've played just over an hour. Lots of attacking intent on the bench, certainly from the Burnley point of view. Maybe not so from the Spurs point of view. Dane Scarlett and Mikey Moore are their most likely strikers. Mikey Moore, just a youngster from the Spurs Academy, who's had a couple of spells on the bench for Tottenham. Very much sought after Scarlett, but... That's all that Spurs really have whilst up. Burnley have Goodmanson, Rodriguez, Benson, Fafana, Amdouni and Tresor that they can call upon. Madison's free kick for Tottenham. Into the area, looking for Romero, headed out by Vitinho. Basuma on the scene first. Finds Romero with his back to goal at the edge of the area. Laid off by Porro down to the right-hand side for Kulisevsky. Chips the ball in right-footed, should be a comfortable claim and is for Ari Muric under his crossbar. 1-1 one, one the score, it remains. Yeah, it needs just a little bit more pace on the cross there you know little sandwich came out didn't it very comfortable for Muric no one around him just comes out collects it well and again play short look at this they're not getting anywhere I don't understand go long when you can into the feet of the likes of Foster Burnley have the ball on halfway with Odebear. Vitinho showing just out to his left-hand side, but Odebear's just turned in field. Spotted the run of Jakob Bryn Larsen. Clips it down the right-hand side of the area. Can he keep it in play? Yes, he can. And he'll retrieve possession out on the right-hand side, but now Skip is back goal side. Goes in field to Josh Cullen. Further into the centre of the half, and Sander Berger plays it back out to the right wing and Bryn Larsen. Cullen now takes over. They were almost in there, Burnley, but just have had to... Reset and reshape. The ball goes back for Maxime Estev. Berger at the edge of the centre circle. Dispossessed by Pape Sar. And Pape Sar's only got Son Yongmin up with him. And Sander Berger has brought Pape Sar down. And that's an easy yellow card for referee Jared Gillett. 1 1, and Spurs have a free kick about 35 yards out we'll, we'll wait until you see this scene he actually gets the ball but he, he puts the pressure on the, the player as well just the tip of the toe I think if he doesn't put his hand on on the back of Saar 
he's going to get a touch to the ball. It's a silly one. And that's the argument that he's going up to the, the referee now. He says, I've got, I've got the ball. It's definitely a free kick. And I think the yellow card has to come out as well. Free kick to Spurs. Don't forget, we've got live rugby union straight after this commentary. We'll be off to Sandy Park. That stadium right by the M5 that I used to think for years was Exeter City's football ground. It's not. It's Exeter Chiefs rugby ground. <laughs> and they're playing Harlequins. Andrew McKenna, your commentator. Both those sides can still make the Guinness Premiership top four for the end of season jamboree. So make sure you with us straight after this commentary. We'll be off to Devon for that. And then we'll be back to Stadium MK for the second leg of the League Two playoffs. Who will face Crew at Wembley a week tomorrow? MK Dons or Crawley Town? Crawley 3 0 up from the first leg. That's live on TalkSport 2 at 7.45. Spurs have a free kick here that James Madison is winding up to take. As he clips it to the left-hand corner of the box and Brendan Johnson, faced up by Asinor, goes back in field to Eve Bissouma. Looked like he was winding up for a shot. Instead, it's fit out to the right wing and Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky's cross, up go the heads and it's a comfortable save from Romero's header by Ari Muric. Remains. With 25 minutes to go on TalkSport 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1, Burnley 1. Well, I'm surprised James Madison doesn't take that one on. You know, it's a little reverse pass to Brennan Johnson, but the chance is gone then. Even when he receives it back from Brennan Johnson, you know, Burnley have stepped up, done their job uh, defensively. It's not a bad ball from Kulzewski, but to, you have to create, generate your own power because it's just a little dink, isn't it? You're not going to trouble Muric. In the opening... 15 minutes of this second half Tottenham have had over 80% of the ball they've not made it count but they've certainly been pressurising Burnley since the restart Chris Awellan yeah they've been good you know definitely moving the ball getting into attacking areas energy going forward but again the same same that that final decision that final pass contact decision to shoot whatever it may be has let them down and with every minute that ticks away the more desperate Burnley become as they look for a goal to keep their hopes of Premier League survival alive. Now, another yellow card. This time it goes to Jakob Brun Larsen of Burnley for a challenge on James Madison, who wanted to take the free kick quickly, but Jared Gillett was still dispensing the caution to Burnley's goal scorer. So Spurs will have to wait to get play restarted. So it's an excellent play from uh, James Madison. How he manipulates the ball. He just kind of rolls and last in there and yeah you can see the, the frustration I know you couldn't care less but should Madison be in the England squad 100% ok <laughs> 100% if he was Scottish he'd be in oh Scotland's yeah got. 100% <laughs> he, just, he just brings something different doesn't he now Spurs coming forward with Brennan Johnson who was hoping to be at the Euros with Wales but that uh, penalty shootout defeat to Poland did for that it's currently Spurs 1 Burnley 1 as Burnley have a goal kick for the latest odds, head to William Hill, the official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage, where right now you can get Spurs 10-6 uh, to 6 on to win. Burnley, they're at 15-2 to 2 to win. The draw priced at 21-10. to 10. Ball given away by Burnley to Kulisewski. Shot saved by Muric. Those odds that I've just given you are all thanks to William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill, 18+. plus begambleaware.org is the website West Ham have turned it around against Luton Thomas Suchek has made it West Ham 2 Luton 1 that's music to the ears of Luton uh, of Forest and Burnley fans but Burnley need a goal here so do Spurs really it's going to be all out surely in this last 22 minutes or so because a draw isn't enough for either side somebody's got to try and win it at 1-1 yeah, I think they have to take necessary risks, don't they? You know, I think uh, over Kimmet, you know, it leaves holes in behind. So I, I, I see more goals, at, I definitely see more goals in this game. Ball's back with Ari Muric, the Burnley goalkeeper. Just clips the ball up to the halfway line, comfortably won in the air by Oliver Skip. No real challenge for the left back. And he hooks it back towards the halfway, but straight to Lyle Foster. Just tucks it in field for Josh Cullen. Now Odebert, first time ball to try and get Larson away, trying to get the ball out of his feet. Just slowed down his run and then he slid it down the right hand side of the box, thinking Odebert had continued his run. But Odebert had been caught on his heels. And the ball's back with Vicari. Now listen to us around here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Tottenham fans are saying, come on, get the job done. These are there for the taking in our view, say the Tottenham fans. Yeah, well, I've got to say, I think the atmosphere has been very, very quiet, hasn't it? You know, I think the when the players came out, it was excellent, it was electric, but they have to be entertained, you know, and 
second half has been better without really creating clear cut chance after chance that Madison one was the probably the best opportunity of the second half where he probably should have put it in the back of the net that's the voice of Chris Willemo alongside me Ian Dancer one of Chris's old clubs Wolves have just scored against Crystal Palace to get themselves back into the game Wolves 1 Crystal Palace 2 Matthias Cunha Ball's back with Guillermo Vicario finding Son Jung Min comes so deep to pick up possession the Spurs captain plays it out to Romero who glides past Wilson Odebear keeps the ball and plays it over halfway asking Kulisewski to give chase but Dara O'Shea well he comfortably got there first and then gave the ball back to Dejan Kulisewski who's now down by the dead ball line near the corner flag on this near side goes down no foul says the assistant on this near side Darren Can and Odebear will tuck it back in field and Burnley will try and bring the ball downfield we're into the last 20 minutes of normal time here on Talk Sport 2 well this is where Burnley need to be better oh here we go a little ball in behind and it caused all sorts of problems it puts Spurs on the back foot and yeah okay on that occasion it was uh, Van de Ven that came in and like you say snuffed out the danger but that's the ball that, that it's on when you've got the, the fluency and, and, and pace of the likes of Odebear and Vitinho and, and Wide areas. They spurs at the minute are throwing everyone forward. Manuel Benson coming on shortly for Burnley for their first change. Meantime, Spurs have it at 1 1 with Son Young Min. Lovely pirouette. A touch to slide in Pedro Porro. Right hand side of the box. Whoa. That was a right back effort at a goal. And it came horribly off the outside of his right boot and went into row Z of the south stand. And Patinho is the player who is coming off to allow Manuel Benson to enter the fray for the Clarets. Just one Premier League start. Scored 13 goals last season in the championship for the Clarets. Manuel Benson, the Belgian youth international. 27 years of age joined from Royal Antwerp in 2022 so he's on for Burnley for these last well 20 minutes or so if you include stoppage time 1-1 one, one. yeah fantastic talent you know I think uh, when in the mood as well he just likes coming in from outside 10 and then he just opens up that goal and well, here he is already Manuel Benson he's spotted Jakob Brun Larsen in space left hand corner of the penalty area gives it back to Benson Benson goes to ground it was a great challenge from Bissouma who's hurt himself in the process Eve Bissouma and Benson's down as well and they're both injured Benson trying to take the shot from the edge of the area. It was a great block from Bissouma, but they're both in the wars and both sets of physios are now coming on to treat their injured players. 1-1, Benson and Bissouma collided. I think it's a clash in the easy. It's a very sore one, that, but the way that Benson signalled to the bench straight away, that the substitution, you know, you don't like to see it, but it is a, a, a sore one. They both come together. You see the bench looking over just now as well. Yeah, he's come on straight away. He makes a, makes a positive impact finding Brun Larson, who I think should have went on his left, taken it to the outside, committed the likes of Romero there. But uh, hopefully he'll be OK. Well, there's a triple change being readied by Tottenham. Radu Dragosin, Dane Scarlett and Rodrigo Bentancourt are all stripped and ready down beneath us Benson back on his feet but just moving rather uncertainly Bissouma long sits back on his feet and so Dragosin who arrived at the club at the start of the season the Romanian joined from Genoa in January so he'll be on as one of the three changes and they're going to make these changes now, Tottenham, before play restarts. Suddenly it looks like they're ready. Dragosin's stood right by the touchline, ready to be introduced. But I think they're going to leave it. In fact, Jared Gillett saying to Darren Cand, do they want to make the changes now? Yes, they do. And Oliver Skip is coming off. Who's done as well as he possibly could in a fish up a tree, as Perry Gross would say. Midfielder playing at left back. Also coming off for Tottenham, Dejan Kulisewski to allow Dane Scarlett to come on. And the other change sees Rodrigo Bentancourt. He's going to be on 
And the other player coming off is Ibisumu, who's just been involved in that challenge with Manuel Benson. Yeah, well, you say like for like, isn't it? Fresh legs coming on. No, and, and, and a game where, yeah, they are dominating possession without really creating much in the, in the attacking end. Glad to see uh, Benson looks to be moving freely as well. Well, he can't come on quite yet, place where he started, but uh, he needed treatment, so he's got to wait that regulation 30 seconds before he can be reintroduced. Wolves 1, Palace 3. Palace back with that two-goal cushion. Eberechi Eze with Palace's third at Molyneux. Quarter of an hour to go here on TalkSport 2 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Both these sides looking for a winner for very, very different reasons. Here is Bentancourt just onto the field, Uruguayan. Out to the left-hand corner of the box. Son finds a cross from the van der Ven that went straight into the arms of Murich. It was really hit at pace across goal by Mickey van der Ven, but well dealt with by Ari Murich. And so Burnley have the chance to clear the ball downfield. Benson's back out there. Hopefully none the worse for wear, having only just come onto the field of play. Well, it's much better from Tottenham. You know, Van de Ven in that area, and again, it's piled into that near post area. And then it was Poro that tried to get across, but Muric came out good, strong hands as well. Throw in for Tottenham Hotspur, with 14 minutes to play of normal time. Bentancourt, back for Dragosin. And it looks like three at the back for Spurs with Romero, Dragosin and Van de Ven in a three they're just pushing as many players forward as they can you're listening to Spurs 1 Burnley 1 on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day throw in taken quickly by Spurs down the right hand side trying to get Scarlett in behind came back from a Lona Ipswich in the first half of the season Dane Scarlett and there's two balls on the field of play and it's going to be an uncontested drop ball for Spurs to keep possession just inside the Burnley half of the field Bentancourt plays the ball into the feet of Scarlett lays it off to Madison quick feet from James Madison looking for an option slides it out to the right wing and Brennan Johnson is back stationed out on this near side the Spurs right after Kulosevsky's substitution Poro with the cross deflected that makes the catch easier for Murich 1-1 yeah I think Brennan Johnson has to be a little bit more direct Charlie Taylor on a yellow card is the opposition player there get at him be direct make him commit him and then that's when you can release it to Poro I think Burnley very compact, organised and good positions here, stopping that cross from coming in. Livingston 1, St Johnston 1 in the Scottish Prem. Now here's Son Young Min down the left-hand side for Spurs, left-hand corner of the box, got Dara O'Shea backpedalling, still Son, drives it to the far post and Johnson collides with the post as he steered the ball wide of the post. Goal kick to Burnley, massive chance for Spurs to win it. That is a massive chance because... Son can only put everything on it, put so much pace on the ball for it to get to Brennan Johnson. And with the quality he's got, look at this in the monitor, and he just has to just let the ball hit his foot rather than swing at it, you know? So I think he's actually kind of, he was waiting, trying to hang back, and then he's kind of had to throw himself at it. I think he's got to be in there. James Madison looks for Dane Scarlett up towards the edge of the area. Scarlett making room for a shot. Important block by Maxime Estev, who stayed on his feet well, the big... Burnley sent to half. I think Dean Scarlett's got to just get the shot away. He's tried to get a chop and chop, chop his man up there, but he'd already created the space to get the shot away. Dara O'Shea slides it out to the right hand side for Manuel Benson. Gets up to the halfway line, the Burnley number 10. Faced up by Van der Ven. Just coaxes it back in field to Dara O'Shea. So 1 1 here, 0 0 at Bournemouth. Everton lead by a goal to 0. Newcastle 1, Brighton 1, West Ham 2-1 up on Luton and Palace, 3-1 up at Wolves. Burnley coming forward with Josh Cullen, into the feet of Lyle Foster, just can't turn away from Madison, who won the ball back, but then he was immediately dispossessed by Josh Cullen. Both sides giving the ball away. Now Spurs have it back, and Brennan Johnson carrying the ball down the right-hand side. Three further forward with him, one of them's Romero, across to Dade Scarlett, by drop for Sar! What a save by Moritz! Kept in play and Esteb just shovels it out of play on the near side. 
Can't be kept in play by Manuel Benson. Pape Sarr thought he was going to win it for Spurs, but Ari Muric had other ideas. 1-1. Well, one, one. Excellent bit of play, Romero. I think he's got to put it across the face of goal rather than cut it back. Dane Scarlett just couldn't really get the, the contact. Then he should give it back to Dane Scarlett as well to get the shot away there. Oh, I tell you what, it's a fantastic save from Muric. Fantastic save. George Earthy has given West Ham a 3-1 lead. That must be a first goal in senior football for him. Luton are done for. West Ham 3, Luton 1. Forest play at Chelsea. At, uh, again, at home against Chelsea at the City Ground at 5.30. Regular updates from Jeff Peters into the game day phone-in with Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Albonlahor. Luton on 26, Forest 29. Burnley here on 25 are getting relegated. And they're bringing on Tresor for Jakob Brun Larsen for their second change of the afternoon. So Mike Tresor getting his opportunity late on here on loan from Genk. Former Anderlecht player, another player spotted by Vincent Company from his days playing and working at Anderlecht. And he's going to try and get to the game straight away on the halfway line, but Porro. Oh, great skill from Pedro Porro to drag the ball away from his opponent. Finds James Madison. Madison looks out left for Son Jung Min. Son got Asin Young back pedalling. Just can't take the ball with him, Son Jung Min. But he's got support down the left hand side from Mickey van der Ven. Son again. Faced up by Benson. Plays it back out to van der Ven on the left hand side and roll back infield to Dragasin. Square ball for Romero. Now ball looking for Brennan Johnson, but Charlie Taylor got his foot in and toe-ended it out for a throw. Nine minutes to go, Chris and Willemo. Both sides running out of time here to win it. Yeah, well, look, uh, Tottenham are in such control that Burnley are just pegged in. They've got to be brave and step up that defensive line. At the minute, it's just so much space for Tottenham. Just keep possessing the ball, keep rotating it, recycling it, and moving Burnley. They can't get nowhere near them at the minute. Ball up to the edge of the area. Dane Scarlett lets it run. Van der Ven! Fantastic goal from Mickey van der Ven to keep Spurs Champions League hopes alive and maybe, just maybe, sink Burnley in the process. Dane Scarlett let the ball run for his centre-half teammate and he opened up his body, van der Ven, and steered it left-footed. Ex-Burnley pass, Moorich. Lovely goal from Mickey van der Ven. That could be that for the Clarets. Spurs 2, Burnley 1. It's an excellent goal. Working well. Van der Ven, what's he been doing in that position? You're getting forward. I've got to say, Moorich has no chance whatsoever because he's unsighted. But the way that van der Ven opens up his body and then finds that bottom left-hand corner, what a finish this is. You know, it's, it's, it's harder to do. What a, he's actually going the other way. In. Puts his left foot, opens the, go the, the, the goal up. And Munich at full stretch can get nowhere near it because the pace and the accuracy of the shot from Van der Ven just kind of bends it round the defender as well. It's an excellent finish. So with that goal, Tottenham move on to 63 points. Four behind Aston Villa with two to play. Villa play Liverpool live on Talk Sport on Monday evening. And then Villa go to Crystal Palace on the final day. Seven minutes to go here. But at the other end of the table, with Luton now 3-1 down and Burnley now losing here, we look set to lose all three promoted clubs. Johnson for Spurs, fires it across the face of goal and Muric got fingertips to it to keep it away from the far post. And out for a throw on the far side. It's actually going to be given as a Burnley throw. Looked like it got a touch off the fingers of the goalkeeper. Well, there's a few of the, the Spurs players asking, Jared Gillett, <laughs> what's going on? You know, but again, yeah, it was a poor decision. He, he got a clear touch on it, didn't he, Muric? Well, we've never seen a season where all three promoted clubs have bitten the dust and gone straight back down again. Plenty of ones and twos but not all three. That's what's set to happen the way things are this afternoon. Burnley have now got to find two goals inside six minutes plus added time. And now they're going to have to commit players forward and that'll leave space. And there's space that Sun Jung Min is trying to exploit down the left-hand side now for Tottenham Hotspur. Three to aim at in the area. 
faced up by Asignol, gets into the box, Son lays it back to the edge of the area and Bentancourt hit a left-footed shot that was blocked over the bar by Cullen for a Spurs corner, 2-1 to Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, they're moving it very well, getting in good, good areas. When Son's driving it, you can't let him come into the 18-yard box. Asignol's like, trying to kind of usher him one way. You've got to go and present yourself there. Stop him from coming in, and then you can get your challenge. The way to pass, little cut back to Benson Cool there. He did everything right, but there's a lot of burnly bodies in front to, to get the block in there. But much better from Tottenham. Will be a corner for James Madison at the south stand end atmosphere is far more positive now in it comes from Madison, great header for Romero brilliant save from Moric flying across his goal to turn it behind for another corner to Tottenham 2-1 it's an excellent ball in from Madison tacked very very well you know, to be fair he shouldn't really get a hand on that Muric but he got two good strong hand just put it to the side there, it's a fantastic save Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton all going down, Luton are still just three points behind Forrest but the goal difference is just too great there's a 13 goal swing required and Forrest may get a point against Chelsea anyway in comes the corner from Madison punched away somewhat awkwardly by Muric Benton Core guides the ball back out to Madison on the left hand side played in field for Pedro Porro for Tottenham Hotspur another double change coming up for Spurs and indeed a double change for Burnley meantime Pedro Porro who got Spurs level, treads on the ball, and Asignon will clear, and then there's a foul on Odebert, and a yellow card going to be issued to Pape Sar for that challenge, on Wilson Odebert, and now two substitutions for Burnley, and Lyle Foster is being replaced by uh, David Fafana, on loan from Chelsea, Scored his last goal against Brentford. Just 21 years of age, David Datra Fafana. And the other change will see Zeki Amdouni coming on. The Swiss who joined from Basel in July. And he's coming on to replace Josh Cullen, the captain, who was on a yellow card. But the thing is, Burnley need goals at this point, Chris Wellemo. Yeah, exactly that. You know, so bringing on attacking players, they've got to go for it. You know, I think it's... Uh, it's all about trying to stay in the Premier League, isn't it? So uh, they've got to take necessary risks. They can see the game doesn't really matter. So it's just about trying to make it uncomfortable for, for Tottenham for what is it? Six, probably. We added maybe what, eight to ten minutes? Well, there'll be a few to add on because of all these substitutions, the latest of which sees James Madison taken off to allow Giola Celso to come on. And also Pierre Emil Hoybier is going to come on for Pape Sar. Sar's just been booked. And Hoybier, the Dane, who hasn't scored in the Premier League yet this season, got four last year. He's going to come on. And Brentford have taken the lead at Bournemouth. Brian and Burmo making it 1 0 to Brentford late on at the Vitality. Uh, Crystal Palace is at uh, no Noiru Ahamada gets himself a red card for a second yellow so we're back underway two minutes of normal time to go plus whatever Jared Gillett wants to add on for stoppages Burnley staring relegation in the face Tottenham keeping their hopes of a top four finish alive remember they've still got Manchester City to come here on Tuesday night and then their last game of the season is it already relegated Sheffield United next Sunday afternoon. Whilst Villa have got Liverpool at home and then Crystal Palace away to contend with. The gap will still be four points as things stand between Tottenham in fifth and Villa in fourth. And that Tottenham-Manchester City game is exclusive to Talk Sport on Tuesday night. Into the last minute of normal time. Tottenham two. Burnley won. Burnley need two goals. It's that simple. Otherwise they're down. Here's Manuel Benson down the right-hand side. Clips the ball in field to Odebert. Now Estev in the centre circle. Swings the ball out to the left-hand side for Tresor. Infield for Sander Berger. 
And Berger clips a neat ball out to Benson on the right wing. Benson down the right hand side of the box. Well, down went Amduni. Nothing doing. Actually, it was Asignon that went down, forgive me. And no foul. Bournemouth one, Brentford one. Dominic Solanke equalises. That's his 19th of the season in the Premier League. And Asignon is thumping the turf face down in frustration, claiming he's been caught. And he's getting little change out of uh, Jared Gill at the moment. He, he is thumping the turf in such frustration, he, like he's in pain, Asignon. Well, there was a little clip of the heel, but I don't know if he's clipped his own heel or it was Sun that's, that's clipped the heel of Asignon there. So he's not happy. But if it's Sun that's clipped the heel, it's a penalty kick. Six minutes of minimum stoppage time have been added on. Ross County 1, Motherwell 3 up in the Scottish Premiership relegation group. And Asignon is back on his feet. What a recovery. And he's giving Jared Gillett too much of the verbals. And he gets a yellow card. Any more of that and he'll get a quick second yellow and he'll be off. Lorenz Asignon just letting the blood boil a little too much there. Didn't get a foul for what he deemed to be a free kick and his ensuing descent has seen him get a caution and he says go and look at VAR he's done the television screen he's lucky that Jared Gillett didn't see him do that in my opinion and now Jared Gillett's just having a word with Sander Berger I don't know about what and you're going to have a word with your right back mate tell him to calm down yeah and if that's exactly what Sander Berger's just done he's just tapped to his temple as he looks across at Lorenz Asignon so we did have six minutes added on but at least one of those minutes has already gone and now Son's having a chat with Asignon explaining why it wasn't a free kick and not a penalty it's all going off <laughs> and Burnley are going down unless they can find two goals from somewhere in the centre circle the Celso worked out to Son on the left hand side plenty forward in support Son twisting and turning gets past Asignon pulls it back but Sander Berger is the man waiting on the six yard line to help clear it for Burnley Benson faced up by Van der Ven tries to go on the outside of the Spurs centre half up to halfway but intercepted by Bentancourt Benson there again was he caught he was by La Celso. that's a free kick to Burnley but boy oh boy is time running out for Vincent Company and his Clarets Chris Uellamo. yeah you can see the, the frustration with Vincent Company he's trying to back on information make sure his players are going to go to the, the final whistle stranger things has is is, is happened in football Ian we've all been there and we've, we've seen things but uh, yeah I think it's a big ask big ask Tottenham are in complete control of this game Fafana out on the far side trying to roll Dragas into the dead ball line can't keep it in play though it's a goal kick awarded and the Burnley fans away to our far side over on the south, the north east corner. I think reality is dawning. They arrived, I would imagine, more in hope than expectation, but they had the lead here. But they've been pegged back and Tottenham once again have turned the scoreline around in their favour at their home stadium. 2 on the score. Three minutes of added time gone. Three more to go. So we get the game day phone in with Gabby Agbonlahor and Jamie O'Hara on TalkSport at 5.30 once Adrian Durham has given you a full classified check on TalkSport not long after 5pm. I'm sure Burnley fans you'll want to react to what at the moment is relegation for your team and Spurs tell Jamie whether it was a shambles particularly in the first half. Son Jung Min left hand side for Tottenham plays an early ball into the box and it's steered behind by Maxi Mestev for a late Tottenham Hotspur corner 2-1 they lead in the last knockings yeah they'll be second best Burnley all second half you know I think Burn uh, Tottenham have came out controlled the game I mean I think you look at the, the, the stats the second half it's uh, yeah it's yeah what 67% in, in Tottenham's favour uh, they've, they've been comfortable and they've been clinical as well Pedro Porro right hand corner of the box for Tottenham Hotspur lays it back to Hoybier and then Hoybier touches it in field for Bentancourt Romero gives it back to Hoybier turns and tries to feed the ball inside the fullback brilliantly done Johnson across the face of goal and Dara O'Shea got in front of Dane Scarlett to deny him his first Premier League goal it's a corner kick in the end 
Well, Brian Johnson, it was the right decision there. I'm just trying to think, could it have came? Nah, to be fair, it's defensive I've got there. I think he could have got it a little bit earlier. You know, I think he had to he had to play it first time, which he did, and it was good defending from Dara O'Shea. And he's been defending well all afternoon, Dara O'Shea. He has. Corner kick to be taken by the Celso into this near post, comfortable claim by Moore. It just barges into a couple of Spurs players as he tries to make room for himself. Bournemouth 1, Brentford 2. Johan Visser looks to have won it for Brentford late on at the Vitality. 2-1 here to Tottenham, but Burnley trying to get in behind. Benson trying to get in behind the defender, Dragosin, but Dragosin slid in and towed into the ball back to Vicario, but he had to do that. Benson looked favourite to get ahead of him there, Chris Uwellemo. Yeah, he did. I thought Benson was going to win the, the race. I think that's why Dragosin had to kind of throw himself to the ground to get the contact, and he done ever so well. And now Burnley have a free kick as Bentancourt brings down Sander Berger and Muric is saying, can I go up for this, boss? And Vincent Company says, yeah, you might as well. We need two at this point because the six minutes are nearly up. We've gone past the last chance saloon. They're nearly out the back door into the tumbleweed and the dust of the EFL, as they will see it. They don't want to go back there after one year, but that's what's happening to Burnley as things stand. Trestle standing over the free kick, midway point of the Tottenham half to the left of centre. Scarlett is the one-man wall in front of him. Spurs holding their defensive line at the edge of the box. Trestle raises his right arm, delivers it right-footed. Players have gone down and it's a Burnley player, O'Shea, that's committed the offence. And instead it's a Tottenham free kick. And even though Murich is way out of his ground, Spurs are in no hurry to take the set-piece. 2-1 they lead pushing and shoving around the edge of the area and it was Dara O'Shea who was the guilty party Vicario will have this free kick so it's down to Jared Gillett how much more we play on Vicario telling his post to push out towards the right hand side Spurs are almost there for the three points that they need to keep their Champions, ho Champions League hopes alive there goes the full-time whistle and it's all over for Burnley once again in the Premier League. They are relegated back to the Championship after a one-season stay. Their run of just two defeats in nine gave them a little bit of hope. And having taken the lead through Jakob Brunn-Larsen in the first half here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they had even more hope. But Pedro Porro crashed home an equaliser just shy of half time and then a second half that Tottenham dominated Spurs got the winner to keep their lingering Champions League hopes alive Mickey van der Ven brilliantly steering home a ball from the edge of the area to give Spurs another win where they've come from behind in front of their own but Burnley have to deal with life back in the second tier of English football their relegation confirmed here Spurs bite on for four at full time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's Tottenham Hotspur two, Burnley one. Great work from Ian Danter. Interesting looking down on the Burnley players when the full time whistle went. Many of them stayed on their feet. Charlie Taylor, the left back, fell to his back. Previously relegated with this same club a couple of years ago. I was there that day when they lost to Newcastle United. Chris, I know you were there too. Will this feel different to that relegation a couple of years ago? No, you know, it's devastating. You know, I think uh, you think about the work when they come in the, the early days. I think they came in even earlier, middle of June, didn't they, uh, Burnley? And then there's a plan. The remit is to stay up, do whatever it takes to stay up. Very, very slow start. Got better on a, on a, on a not bad run at the minute. Only two, two defeats in, in, in nine. Must be nowhere near good enough. You know, I think conceding too many goals the points dropped from uh, from winning positions. I think uh, Ian's already alluded to it. You Stark, know, far, yeah. yeah, far, far too many. So it's like, and it's happened again today. Again, yeah. It's about managing games. You know, you, you 
when you score the goal you put the ball in the back of the net you do not have to go you don't have to score a game really you just make sure you don't concede yeah. you don't have to play the prettiest football make it the ugliest game but do whatever it takes to get the right result the sun is still shining on that corner of the stadium yeah. where the Burnley fans have gathered and it is really good to see the way that they're greeting their players on a day of despair let's not forget all of them to a person still standing up and applauding the efforts of their team they were good today today's not the reason they were relegated no exactly uh, in the last probably two months is not the reason why they're relegated it should have been earlier when they started the penny should have dropped we need to change we need to tweak our style we need to tweak, uh, tweak our identity to get points out of these games and what I will say is that these fans have been excellent but they understand that it's the Premier League came came very very early in, the, in this journey of Vincent company so they are where they, they, they expected to be two years ago that's it it's, it's, it's as simple so you, as that you told us before the game whatever happens today over the next week or two he has to stay what must he adapt because surely at this level he has to do some thinking well yeah well I think he, he'll learn a lot and, and I think you have to learn from from, uh, from these experiences but you've got to remember Vincent Company's style and identity blew the championship away I mean they ran away with it they ran away with the league so Keep, try and keep a majority of this squad which I think is a better squad that came up you know of course the likes of Nathan Taylor getting away big big players big moments Benson's not 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 been as, as, uh, as, as well he's not played as many games and got nowhere near the numbers he got in the, in the championship last year but I think the core principles stay the same you know, they're going to be right up there next season, but Vincent Company's a massive, massive part of that. And of course, there'll be interest in him because I think he's, he, has a, he has a belief, he has, a, he has an ethos and a philosophy, but I think he's got unfinished business here. As for Tottenham, that win moves them four points behind Aston Villa. Still got two to play, and Villa have got to play Liverpool on Monday, off the back of going out of Europe, and then an informed Crystal Palace next week. No guarantees they're going to pick up anything more. Well, that's what uh, I'm sure Foster Coglu will be saying to us, but yeah, we're right in it. Stop talking about next season. You know, let's 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 get into the Champions League and let's 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 let's, let's make history again. It's a fantastic group of players. You know, you look James Madison for me today was outstanding. Every time he got the ball, he made things happen. You know, I think uh, players are coming back. The players coming off the bench, making positive impact. That's all a manager. That's all you can do. You know, I think, uh, but yeah, it's game on. Put the pressure on Aston Villa. What have they got? You know, I think Ian said earlier, they look like they're, like they're done and dusted. They've got nothing left, but they've got to find something from somewhere to try and keep this season alive. Yes, they certainly do. Burnley's players are making the slow walk back towards the tunnel. Vincent Company talking behind his hands to his number two, Craig Bellamy. Their efforts have been in vain this season after a particularly sticky start to the half. I don't think your man of the match for today, Chris, is going to come from Burnley. It is time now for us to pick our man of the match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Man of the match on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. So Tottenham coming from behind to win 2-1 and keep their Champions League hopes alive, extinguishing Burnley as a Premier League club. Chris, your man of the match is? Well, I've got to say James Madison. I thought he was excellent today. Every time he got the ball, he made things happen. His range of passing was very evident. Probably should have got a goal, but, you know, everything else he was doing, even defensive responsibilities, he's sticking the box. Has to, has to be on the plane in the summer. Has to be. And if not, Scotland will have him. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that was our man of the match from today's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car.